Boxing Promotions welcomes you for a big night of professional boxing. Show number 10 on the Team Promotions card. Ladies and gentlemen, four rounds of boxing international in the super middleweight division. Introducing first on my right, occupying the red corner with Craig Beebe, his chief mentor. Ladies and gentlemen, originally from Birmingham in the West Midlands in the United Kingdom, came to Australia around about 12 months ago. In amateur boxing, 10 fights, six wins. Tonight, turning professional, wearing total black trunks and scaling 72.25 kilograms. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome Lethal Lee McFadden. McFadden. And across the ring on my left, occupying the blue corner with a big team from the north side, Lawrence, Lawrence Schatz, Justin Nolan and former Australian light heavyweight champion, John McCubbin, with a great Yugoslavian European background in amateur boxing, a perfect record. Four fights, four wins from Epping, scaling 73.10 kilograms, wearing sea blue trunks. Would you welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Diamond Jim Griggick. Griggick. Chris Anderson, here we go. Opening bout, let's get it on at centering. Okay, boys, remember the dressing room. Listen to me at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Good luck. Here we go, bout number one. Number 2002 at the Malvern Town Hall. About to commence our first Chris bout Anderson, round one. of this evening. Howard Lee is there. Chris Anderson is the referee. Lethal Lee McFadden in the red corner in the black trunks up against a Jim Gergic, a Diamond Jim Gergic in the blue trunks. And I have with me to my left uh, Robert Cameron, uh, barrister at law with me here tonight. Robert, great to see you here. Good evening, Stephen, and how do you do, ladies and gentlemen? It'll be a wonderful night's boxing indeed to you, as always. Certainly will. Now at the moment, De Gergic trying to work underneath uh, McFadden there. Uh, McFadden with... Uh, uh, the gloves uh, out, he doesn't uh, protect himself. He hasn't got them up too high there at all, McFadden, at the moment. Uh, bit, bit open there, that's right. But these lads are getting right into it from the bounce of the ball, aren't they, Stephen? Uh, attempting to there. Gergic's trying to push the fight. Uh, he's uh, fairly aggressive at the moment, Gergic. Uh, that uh, will uh, uh, augur well in the eyes of the judges. They like to see an aggressive uh, uh, front-running type of boxer in the ring there, uh, forcing the pace, forcing the issue. McFadden goes down low with that right hand, but missed. And uh, again, Gergic, uh, Robert, he seems to be putting the pressure on McFadden. Oh, he's really rushing him. He's really forcing the issue. And look at the concentration on this man's face, Stephen. Yes, uh, he's, uh, both boys are um, certainly uh, at the moment McFadden's a bit wary of uh, uh, Gergic who uh, appears to be the uh, more aggressive uh, com uh, p uh, p opponent at the moment. Oh, McFadden's definitely the more cautious of the two, Stephen. A degree of hesitancy there, isn't there? Uh, a little bit that he's trying to mix up his uh, stance at the moment with the hands there of uh, McFadden and bouncing around and uh, in comes uh, uh, Gergic over the top all a bit of four a minute. Uh, uh, again, uh, down low, uh, Gergic onto McFadden. And Chris Anderson there has a word to uh, Lethal Lee. Not too sure what that was about, uh, but uh, he's uh, the boys are uh, again in ring centre. Gr Gergic's really looking for that opening. Just, just slightly grazed him on the far side of the face there, really having a crack at him. It certainly is. Uh, what about uh, Gergic there? It's she wisdom. The crowd are into this fight right from the word go. There's, uh, it's a quite a vocal crowd here at Malvern Town Hall. Very. Uh, uh, well, it's become a prime area for boxing here at Malvern. Well, of course, it's in the, the electorate of the opposition leader, Mr. Robert Doyle, who will be joining well, us later uh, in the evening. Stephen, he's a keen supporter okay, of boxing. Yeah, it's going to be excellent to see Mr. Doyle here. Uh, he's got a big day coming up in a few weeks there, uh, Mr. Doyle, at the, uh, at the polls, I believe. Uh, that's right, the big election. And, of course, he may need a bit of enthusiasm from the boxing community to get him over the line. <laughs> Maybe even more than that too at this point in time, but uh, it's going to be interesting and in, uh, a great first round here tonight to open up the card. On the card we've got later on Bobby Patterson uh, against Nick Lantouris at around about the cruiserweight level of course. And um, uh, of course uh, our big fight of the night, Nick Tatoris and uh, Brian Fogarty, which should be an absolute uh, 
a ripper that fight that'll be a, that'll be a bobby dazzler Stephen, because nick tatoris as you know has a huge following in, in Melbourne and melbourne generally and the crowd get right behind him mm. but also Stephen, the nick land tourist fight with bobby patterson i think will be quite entertaining i know a number of fighters wanted to line up against uh, land tourists there was a queue of them there Jim was Peters, dominic Duraco amongst others so uh, mm. this will be a quality bout yeah, a bit of a shame that uh, neither one of those boys is on this card tonight, either Duraco or Chigas, because they're always very colourful. And here comes, uh, at the moment, uh, Gergic working uh, feverishly over the ribcage of uh, McVaden. Uh, Henderson splits them up there. Uh, Gergic, uh, his punches weren't very hard. They will score with them, of course, because uh, uh, they were landing. But uh, McVaden hasn't been flustered by them at all, Robert. It was like he was using a speedball, wasn't it, Stephen? He <laughs> yes. was raining blows on him. <laughs> he was. He's going at 100 miles an hour. Here's again Gergic, a uh, man who's got a lot of energy there at the moment in the second round working away at the McFadden who's uh, gloved up around the head area and uh, not copping any punishment out of that uh, but the way to punch is sometimes can wear someone out oh a gurgic over the top uh, fresh air shot with a Tom Bowler top right hand uh, punching down McFadden got out of there it's slippery as knee. oh first nice punch of the night from McFadden was a right hand Robert straight on the uh, that's, face of Gergic. That's what he needs to do more to assert some authority gurgic has been making all the play at the moment Stephen he's the one who's been uh, uh, letting him have it all the time and McFadden really needed that blow to come back you'll notice it slowed Gergic up a bit or dampened his enthusiasm somewhat certainly did well then Gergic uh, a couple of punches there one grazed the jaw I think one may have caught McFadden around the esophagus region and again uh, in that same area just above the solar plexus I believe and he's doing a pretty good job there Gergic uh, in uh, working away at McFadden McFadden a taller man with a longer reach uh, perhaps should be just uh, saying, trying to exert a bit more authority, Robert. Should be doing oh, a bit more with his height. A nice one on the button from Gergic. It got him right on the button. Then oh, you see that there. Yes. <laughs> Faden using the ropes there to get a bit of leverage, but uh, uh, Gergic is uh, very aggressive here tonight uh, at Malvern Town Hall in the second round. Coming towards the end of the second round, it's been a good fight so far, and uh, Gergic is pushing the pushing it no end. He is at the moment. He's really looking for that opening, isn't he, Stephen? Any yes. any any opening that comes up, he's into it. Yes, no doubt about that, uh, Gergic. He'd go to an opening of a door if he could, the way he's going with the openings here at the moment. He's oh, doing a great I'll job. Oh, that, yeah, absolutely. And another good round boxing there. Uh, and uh, Jim Gergic uh, goes back there. He's uh, taken the fight up to Lee McFadden, Lethal Luton. How did you score that? How did you score that one, Stephen? Well, I, uh, I seem to think at the moment, uh, unofficially here at ringside, I think we must explain to our, our uh, listeners and viewers that uh, uh, when we do uh, uh, make an assessment, uh, of the score that it is an unofficial assessment and uh, the judges are the ones who uh, present their uh, figure work at the end of the fight to the uh, uh, victorian combat and uh, um, uh, combat uh, sorry boxing and combat sports board and uh, the decision is made by the uh, ring announcer so uh, after getting through that administration robert uh, which i think it's very important that we do get out to the listeners and viewers uh, I would tend to think that Gergic is uh, certainly doing enough at the moment on my card to be uh, slightly in front. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about that, but going back to scoring, I'd certainly value your scorecard, Stephen. I think you've demonstrated over the years that you're quite capable of scoring as accurately as any judge. Oh, I appreciate those comments, Robert. Uh, they're very kind of you. But he comes uh, Gergic, uh, Gergic right back into it. Yes. Look, he's really in the ag aggressor here. The raining blows down. Oh, a bit of a retaliation. Oh, Fitton over the top there with the right hand tried to uh, swing him over now. Faden's decided to open up here, but no, he can't uh, uh, have a great deal of impression on Gergic here, who's pushed him away. But uh, great to see uh, Lethal Lee. Did he come out firing there? Uh, really starting to show some uh, uh, flexibility there and some uh, some punching uh, work. Uh, not all of them landed, though, Robert. He just didn't go on with the business, Stephen. All it did was slow Gergic up a bit. He's needs to, need to do a lot more than that. He's got to come back with some combinations that are get to slow uh, Gergic down. He's had uh, no effect on him whatsoever, Steve. Oh, beautiful uppercut from... Oh, oh, yes. Gergic yes. with a couple of big right hands there. Oh, he's got a powerful right hand. He lets it go, Lethal Lee. He got a magnificent right that got him right on the jaw there, Steve. Very well executed. Oh, indeed. the right hand is a good punch. He's unleashing it now, Lethal Lee. He's hitting that one away in the first two rounds, and... Uh, uh, size to Gergic up probably in that period of time, but just the same. Uh, Gergic's you know, back there. Yeah. Yeah. Have to, oh, oh that's that's a up, up, cut with that right. I don't know, Ripper Robert. It was excellent. You see his head jar back with that. Oh, my oh. dear. There he was. Just, just about. 
You'll know you've been hit when you cop that one, Steve. <laughs> oh, with well, you, he said went back so fast, he just about have a whiplash claim out of it, Gurgit. I think he might if he goes and sees a good solicitor, Steve. <laughs> That's right. I'm sure you could recommend one. <laughs> Well, oh, the forearm there from uh, Gergic just trying to push McVeigh off. You've got to watch that. Uh, yeah. Oh, and uh, <laughs> came through a second time there and may have just about clipped McVeigh, but uh, a bit of wrestling going on. There. Oh, and the McVeigh oh, the uppercut, the right nice hand up from Gergic from the left then, and that uh, trying to work. Oh, McVeigh! And once he gets that right hand out now, he's devastating McVeigh. He's done a bit of damage with it this round. He certainly has slowed Gergic up. Don't you worry about that. No doubt about that, Stephen. He's woken up to the effectiveness of his right, and he is using it. And he certainly is, and Chris Anderson sends him to their corners. That's a uh, certainly lethal lose best round. Oh, uh, yes. I, um, I do give that round to McFadden. Yeah, I think oh, he, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Well, yeah. I know it might be a bit controversial there, but I believe he did enough to win that. Uh, uh, both fighters fought admirably in that round. They both took the fight and tried to take the fight up to each other. They oh, pushed yes. the issue, forced the issue, and did an excellent job in the circumstances. Uh, that's what we like to see, and uh, Glee with Louis McFadden in our first two rounds, kept that right hand to himself, and the third round he decided to unleash with that uh, big right cross, also with the straight right, uh, doing uh, some damage to uh, Gurgik Robert. But he, he also uh, woke up to the fact that he, he used his right in combination. There are at least two sequences there, Stephen, who I know he did some excellent left-right uh, combinations that uh, uh, had the effect of slowing Gurgik up considerably, and uh, you'll recall that... Uh, that did rattle there, but there's no doubt it slowed him up. And, and certainly Howard Lee, uh, gee whiz, uh, he's enjoying himself there tonight too, getting right into the uh, atmosphere here at Melbourne Town Hall. It's fantastic for this uh, particular professional boxing uh, tournament here tonight. Many artists promotions doing a fantastic job with Victorian boxing. As always, Peter is at the forefront of bringing you fine boxing viewers. He well, certainly is, he's the man, and here comes Gurgi, they're coming in hard and over the top right hand, trying to do some damage on the McMahon, but no. But Faden gets out. He Gurgic. came back very well, McFadden. He Ooh. ducked out of that. It's pretty fit, McFadden. He might be the fitter boy. I don't know yet, but we'll wait and have to see, of course. But oh, coming up with those uppercuts with that right hand, Robert. Oh, McFadden yes. had a little bit of the uh, forearm in there as well. Then with the right. Oh, and uh, Gergic slashing away there with the left. He got a nice left to the head of the Trying to work over that left hook. Uh, Gergic's getting a little bit sloppy now, Robert, uh, in his uh, attack on uh, McFadden. Uh, I think there's a, not quite as much gas in the tank as there was uh, a round or two ago, Stephen. Yes, I think you could be right there, but uh, he's splashing his punches a bit more now, I suppose, and that's a sign of tiredness, Robert, uh, without yes. a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, no doubt he is, is certainly uh, wearing down a bit here. McFadden's the crisper man still at this point of the fight, but uh, they know they've got to go hard here because it's the last round. Oh, yes. That's oh, right. McFadden with the right hand, Robert, was a very solid punch on the Gurgit coming off the ropes. Watch it, and it was an unintentional clash of heads then, Steve, and I'd keep an eye on their eyes. I wouldn't be surprised if they keep this up, someone might develop a cut over the eye. Well, at least the fight won't be stopped unless it's, uh, it really opens up quickly because we've only got about a minute left or less in the fight. That's right. Uh, Gergic now uh, still trying to uh, move forward. McFadden's more of the counter-puncher to a certain degree. Uh, here he comes now, that right hand. He's always oh, looking yeah. for an opportunity to drop in that right. Oh. It gives you the impression he could do some damage, real damage with that right hand, McFadden. Well, the right one, if it connected, it'd be all over Rover, Stephen. Oh, yes. Oh, well, well, there's a, uh, yeah, well, oh a nice uppercut. Two right crosses, an uppercut yeah. mixed in amongst the middle of it there, and Gugic uh, flows the left. Uh, but uh, the boys near both, uh, all both of them firing a fraction now, and that's oh. the end of the ball game. Was... Excellent viewing. Now, um, McFadden, I think, has uh, very impressively finished that fight, Stephen. He was slow to get off the mark, but in the true West Midlands tradition from Great Britain, he, he showed that he has that ability to go on with the business. He's a real British bulldog, that lad, isn't he? Uh, yes, uh, McFadden, he certainly is a very crisp fighter. Yes, I think that perhaps he fought his first two rounds somewhat conservatively, Robert, where I thought perhaps he could have pushed the issue a little bit harder, perhaps in round two, after he had... Uh, uh, managed to work out uh, what Gergic was all about in round one. He actually seemed to take two rounds to work uh, Gergic again. Now, in a four-round fight, That's uh, to take 50% of the time trying to work out your opponent is always going to cause you difficulty when you're trying to come home if you're trying to win the fight in the last two rounds. Now, McFadden has had two big last rounds. No doubt about that. I think I the point is he's probably looking at it from the perspective of someone who's got an eight to ten round strategy. And as you said quite rightly, Stephen, you can't actually apply that quite so well to a four-round bout. 
but uh, you'll note, of course, that's very much in the tradition in the UK. They have fight nights in all the major provincial cities every Friday and Saturday night where eight to ten rounders are the norm. Four round uh, bouts are very unusual. Uh, uh, you know, a boxer I have great interest in over in Britain, uh, Alex Moon. Moon uh, does his whole preparation based on a minimum eight rounds. No, oh, yes, well, he's a very fit boy, as we know, Alex Moon. He's had a couple of big wins against Australian fighters over there in that uh, junior lightweight division, although recently did lose his title, I was informed. Uh, yes, yes, well, Commonwealth well, title. I don't know how that came about there. because I, I, I was disappointed that the person who defeated Moon was not an Australian. I felt well, that the, yes. his uh, Commonwealth junior lightweight championship rightly belongs in Australia and should have been wrested from Moon. Yes, well, that would have been nice, but... Uh, uh, perhaps we'll find a junior lightweight there at some stage there. Howard Lee, we should uh, cross to Howard Lee. Certainly, we'll hear the results from Howard, Stephen. Ladies and gentlemen, Judge Gus Mercurio gave it 39-37, blue corner, Jimmy Green. But, but, ladies and gentlemen, Judges Andrew Campbell, Judge Campbell and Judge Anika Williams both counted the fight 38-38, a majority draw. It's a draw. Sergi and I've just met the Sergi family. Mark Sergi will come up in centering a little later to present the Robert Sergi Memorial Cup to our best preliminary fighter. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, six rounds of boxing in the junior welterweight division. All fights tonight have the blessing of the Victorian Professional and Martial Arts Board, Professional Boxing and Martial Arts Board. Chairman Bernard W. Barber, former InterVarsity champion at ringside. Officials in attendance include Bob Todd, Bart McCarthy and Dr. Simon Hillman. Noel, you're working with Malcolm McGuinness and Mario Magris at ringside. Ladies and gentlemen, six rounds of boxing, two amateur stars turning professional tonight here at Melbourne. Introducing first... Well done, David. In the blue corner, ladies and gentlemen, originally from the Golden Valley. In kickboxing, he's worked around the world, including Tokyo, Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, now residing in Northcote and working out at the Underworld Gym in Flinders Lane City with luminaries Julian Holland and Sam King Sullivan. With Steve Stenborg and former Australian and world boxing kickboxing champion Amanda the Cannon Buchanan in the corner. Ladies and gentlemen, in kickboxing, 24 fights, 14 wins. Tonight's scaling, 62.60 kilograms, wearing JRE trunks of black and white. Would you welcome Ben T.C. Smullen? Smullen. And across the ring, trained by former world-rated flyweight Bobby Scrivano. Ladies and gentlemen, in amateur boxing with Team Brizzy at the Calabria Club. 21 fights, 16 wins, a two-time Victorian amateur welterweight champion. Scaling 63.60 kilograms, wearing a kangaroo's colours of blue with white. Would you welcome Shannon McMahon? <laughs> Your judges at ringside, Andrew Campbell, Gus Mercurio, Nika Williams, the energy drink. Chris Anderson. 
Ready? Mm. Not yet. I can't imagine why. <laughs> Very interesting. Brute force is the drink to drink. Uh, they do a great job. But... And here we go now for our second fight here tonight. Shannon McMahon is in the red corner. He's a top line amateur coming through the ranks. Chris Anderson's our referee again. Second fight for the night. Chris and Ben Smullen in the uh, blue corner now. Uh, Both tonight. young lads turning professional for the first time. Uh, ben Smullen, uh, he's had uh, a number of kickboxing fights at the professional yes, yeah, Robert, Professional uh, boxing uh, in the strict sense. Steve. Yeah, I didn't quite hear what Howard had uh, indicated in terms of the um, the actual uh, fights and uh, whatever for Ben. But Ben is trained by Amanda the Cannon Buchanan, I believe, uh, has been at the um, the world for some time and uh, as far as Shannon McMahon's concerned I don't know a great deal about his background he's got Bobby Scravano in the corner oh what a trainer he is oh in indeed mind. indeed Stephen no doubt about that Smullen's a very cagey boy Robert he's very uh, clever very slippery and he knows the moves he's um, got boxing and kickboxing skills and we should see how he adjusts purely to the uh, the art of the sweet science here tonight well that's a big test Stephen professional boxing is quite a different sport uh, no doubt about that and uh, young Shannon McMahon, gee whiz, he holds himself well. The gloves are beautifully positioned. Uh, he does protect his facial area very well, Shannon McMahon. And uh, he's in fine physical shape, the young lad. He's a picture of concentrations, McMahon, isn't he? He certainly is. Well, that's the American pronunciation, isn't it, I suppose? Well, of course, I'm reflecting my American origins, Stephen. My father, <laughs> yes, of course, is from New York, New York. Yes, that's right. So, uh, McMahon to you. That's right, and always will remain, McMahon. <laughs> OK, well, he's wearing the long blue trunks with white piping, uh, triple white piping. Whoa! And young McMahon, or McMahon, now you've got me doing it. Uh, <laughs> coming over the top with the right hand on Smollum. He was looking for that opening, wasn't he? He's very uh, a picture of concentration, McMahon, isn't he? He certainly is, the young kid. And uh, Ben Smollum now all tangled up with uh, young McMahon there on the ropes. And, uh, and uh, Chris Anderson split them up. I don't know about that. She was a love of the kid style. He's got a beautiful technique. Oh, yes, he has, hasn't he? And uh, flashes out that left jab. It's a beautiful punch. He puts a bit of shoulder behind it, too. Testing Smullen out at the moment. Even Smullen now might have had a little bit of a bruising on the facial area already, or maybe he's had a bit of asthma before he came in and might have been sneezing. I don't know. But um, McMahon yeah. certainly boxes in a most a classic orthodox style, doesn't he, Stephen? He certainly does. And uh, a good first round from those boys. Uh, young McMahon, he acquitted himself very well there, and uh, Ben Smullen very professionally, just uh, uh, checking things out there at the moment and doing a good job. How did you score that? He's Julian Holland is here. Julian Holland, are you going to join us? Julian Holland at ringside. He will, Julian Holland will join us for a uh, commentary, perhaps for the Bobby Patterson, Nick Lantura Stouse that will come up after this. Always a joy to co-commentate with uh, Julian. He's a, a wealth of boxing knowledge, Steve. Certainly is, Julian. A great man and uh, done a fantastic job at welterweight level. Uh, 32 fights, 28 wins, 3 losses, a draw, 18 below the short route. His knockouts, uh, his fights. A most experienced campaigner indeed. Now, how did you score that round, Steve? Well, look, it was, there wasn't a great deal. The boys were, were, were sort of testing each other out. It was very hard to judge through because a, a lot of the punches didn't land. They were sizing each other up very very carefully, weren't they? Yeah, look, I think I'll, I'll probably just about give it even. It was a bit of a, yeah. you know, a, a tangled up affair a bit. So uh, there weren't too many scoring punches, really, were there? Steve? Oh, a nice, uh, nice uh, connect from uh, McMahon there. Mm, yes, lovely, uh, a lovely punch. Oh, there and uh, Smullen there, a little bit of wrestling, Greco-Roman style there with the uh, hand around the shoulders, bringing him to the knees. Well-executed headlock, Stephen, yes. <laughs> oh, another nice left there from McMahon. Oh, Greco-Roman as it was pronounced during the Olympics, I think. Oh, another nice right from McMahon. He's certainly looking for that opening, isn't he? Mm, yes, now he's a very quick customer, uh, young McMahon. He's, uh, he's a classic scientific boxer. He, he's, he's not a bruiser. He's a scientist of this uh, sweet, and sweet sport. Sweet sport, yes. yes. The, the art. The pugilistic art. And uh, we have with us Peter Maniatis has joined us there at ringside there, the promoter, doing a great right. job here tonight. with Outstanding this, uh, job. A sellout crowd here at the Malvern Town Hall. A sellout crowd. Uh, a fantastic effort uh, with a lot of boxing and kickboxing coming up and a sellout crowd at Malvern Town Hall. And a most enthusiastic crowd indeed, Stephen. They get right behind their, their opponent, their men, don't they? No, they do. Now, McMahon trying to work in there. He got a nice right hand, a straight right coming in on Smollin. Oh, there we go. A big right hand from uh, young McMahon. A rock to Smollin. And he now tangles the boy up. But he doesn't appear to be hurt, Robert. Well, you can feel it from here, Stephen. Oh, that was a stinger. No, it wasn't ever. He tried the same thing again. He got tangled up again with Smollin. And uh, the young uh, lad is uh, certainly you're not afraid to take up the more experienced boy. No, not at all. First fight coming out of Emma ranks too in professional ranks for young McMahon. He's, uh, they told me, uh, Peter Maniatis did tell me he was a good up-and-comer. Oh, yes, another nice combination there on Smullen. 
Beautiful combination, Sam. McMahon is a real scientist, isn't he, Steve? Oh, is he ever? He's uh, got real ability here, young McMahon, and uh, he's uh, coming in hard on Spawn. In fact, he's attacking. I tell you what, the Gus, he'd love the way this boy fights. Yes, yeah, so and Brian Memory the other night when we were out at Hank Stanley's did uh, suggest to me that McMahon was going to be a real find, and he certainly uh, has lived up to that prophecy, hasn't he? Oh, he certainly has so far, and uh, gee whiz, I tell you what, I'd just about give that round to the lad. I think so. I was about to ask you how you scored it. Rebecca. How did you score it? Uh, I scored that a 10-9 to Young McMahon. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and they're just getting a little bit close to the equipment so we have to take a check out there but everything's under control well at least we still have sound and light that's all <laughs> we need we've got to look after our uh, mechanics here or we'll be in all sorts tell of me stuff. Stephen I thought that McMahon uh, demonstrated what a classic scientist he was in that round did you notice his combinations were crisp they were efficient they were thought out if he got an opening he exploited it to the maximum he really did show tremendous presence, reaction and depth of thought. A, a superb scientific boxer, wasn't he? Uh, he's um, the icon of concentration, uh, Shannon McMahon. Oh, but I did like his combinations. He followed up very well when he... Uh, oh, no mouth guard at the guard. moment. The yeah. uh, corner, we were giving the instructions, forgot to put that uh, back in the lad's mouth, but he's right yeah. now. But yes, he um, not only is he tremendously fit and have the skills, but uh, he does have the con concentrative powers which are required buying a professional fighter. He, he does. Have you noticed on several occasions when Smullen has lined him up for one, he's moved, his movement has been beautiful. He's right out of the way. He, he, he's like a butterfly. He really is, isn't he? The he movement. Is. Certainly is. Certainly is. Smullen there managed to uh, uh, get one in underneath. Oh, no! Oh, McMahon! And came in McMahon with the lefts and rights. Uh, succession, pinpointed. succession of jabs on the button. They were very <laughs> oh, effective. Yes. Pinpointed Mc, uh, Smullen then McMahon and did it beautifully. But did you notice the way there was a minute opening and he exploited it with that first jab which uh, did, did stun, stun Smullen and, and he went on with it and got two more and in. And a triple left jab there, Robert. It was, yeah. Very impressive. And that and only good fighters can get away with that, mind you. Well, that also shows you the quality of the lad, doesn't it? It does, Robert. Without a shadow of a doubt. What, what? Oh, underneath a bit low on Smullen, but Smullen managed to wrap a couple of right hands into the rib cage and the lower strata of uh, McMahon. You wouldn't think this was McMahon's first professional boxing bout, would you? You wouldn't. He looks like a, um, a, 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 a I'd say, a match hardened pro already, but uh, certainly. Uh, uh, he doesn't carry the scars of a match art and pro because he's, he's <laughs> I don't think this boy would get touched all that much, I don't think, in the uh, ring. And he doesn't look like he's ring rusty or anything like that either, no, Steve. Not at all. No, no. He'd be pretty active in the gym and he would have pretty active as an amateur, so he would be um, certainly on the ball fitness-wise. And uh, But, uh, you know, you can go ring rusty, Steve, and if you're not oh, getting regular... If you're not active, yeah, yeah, that's my word. Could be happening to Pierre Karam at the moment. He, he's struggling to get a fight there at the moment. Yeah, he needs to get one. Yeah. Uh, Nothing worse than that. If you can't get fights, you do get ring rusty, and then you get sloppy. So uh, it's uh, the worst thing that can happen to you. You need to be active. Oh, and there's the bell for the end of round three. And, uh, how did you score that one, Well, you'd probably have to say that uh, McMahon, again, with his uh, skills, uh, just on full display to this full house, uh, would uh, have shown themselves to the fore, and that's been a big thing. Uh, photography here is uh, very, uh, taking a lot of photos of McMahon. That's why he's over in this corner. Well, he's a champion of the future I have no doubt we'll see this lad fighting in a state and national title very much sooner rather than later Steve and yeah. an exciting prospect yes, yes I certainly agree with you he's such a mechanic with the way he goes about things that I'm very impressed with him yes but he is impressed with him the classic orthodox boxer isn't he he certainly is is classic once no again one, one has to commend Peter Maniatis for uh, finding this talent and getting him a pro fight here tonight and I, I think Peter deserves full marks for that an outstanding job he's done in getting, getting the fighters together this has been an exciting bout yeah, he's done a great job here tonight round uh, four coming up now Smullen uh, trying to exert a bit of authority he knows he's got a motor on him Got Amanda Buchanan over here in his corner too, I might say, from the Underworld Gym, of course, who is his mentor. That's right. An excellent trainer she is too. Is she ever? Does a lot of stunt work for film and TV work as well as the training at the Underworld. Well, it also shows you the way boxing isn't a sexist sport. No, not at all. And 
And I Young McMahon just landed two short rights to the jaw of um, Smullen. He did. Very and the left and right combination from the boy. Oh He's Thanks. really going on with the business, Stephen. He's got the repertoire. I don't think he's hurting Smullen, but the uh, way the punches over a period of time can start to wear you down. But he certainly, you know, in the judges' eyes, they love this stuff. Oh, I think he is uh, wearing him down a bit, Stu, and I don't think there's quite the gas in the tank there was a round or two ago. Oh, I've got a feeling that Ben might be a bit uncomfortable uh, with just the pure boxing and perhaps um, kickboxing uh, because he's... But say anything tonight, he's probably been not quite uh, showing the same flair as he would in the, at, at the, his professional kickboxing style. Well, they are two very distinct styles, Stephen. You've got to remember that. Mm. And it's not... But perhaps he's more comfortable with his kickboxing as opposed to his, his purely uh, boxing situation. I agree. I think if you've been a kickboxer, you feel almost retarded when you get in the ring and you can't, mm. can't use your legs. Yeah, I think you're right there. And while we were talking then, uh, again, McMahon exerting more authority upon Smullen with some uh, body shots. And uh, almost Smullen turned his back on the fight of side on then and... Uh, the ring, he's lost that the ponytail look he had a moment ago, I nearly. Mean, my rubber band's come out. Oh, and a good stand for a punch from Smullen. He is. Nice punch. Oh, the ground. A beautiful punch now. I did say at the start of the night, he's a cagey, crafty customer, Smullen. Oh, yes. But gee whiz, what have we got here? We've got 6-2, so he's got time. Oh, my word. There's plenty of time in this because there's only a couple of points in it as they we're talking now. So the, you know, the knockdown would give the round to Smullen, basically, it would appear at this point. And Oh boy, uh, that's a very uh, interesting situation. So, once again, what an exciting bout, Stephen. It really is. Well, it was a pretty close. In fact, if anything, probably McMahon was probably uh, slightly ahead up until that knockdown. But uh, you know, the knock to the knees, well, Tago wasn't a slip, was it? I didn't, it was a, uh, uh, I think, a, a standing eight count, was there? I didn't see that. He applied the count, Steve. Well, if he didn't apply the count, it's a slip. Right, okay. If it's a slip, it's not a knockdown. Uh, so if it's no slip, then uh, I think we're back to a, 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 a ten all even round then. Just uh, adjusting Smullen's ponytail here. Very essential grooming. That was a slip, was it? We better get that right because that's very important as far as this card's concerned. Yeah. I believe it was a slip. I, I think didn't see him apply the count. Uh, so uh, he slipped on the floor then and uh, no count applied would appear to be the case. I was watching uh, at the time, not so much the referee, but McMahon. When I saw him go to ground, I was shocked by it. Yes. And uh, took my eyes off the referee to see what he was doing. He might have had a bit of stale rosin or something. Yeah, anything had happened. Oh, Smullen with a whipping right hand there on McMahon. We've got a real fight in our hands here now. Oh, my word. And, uh, Smullen's had a breath of fresh air, hasn't he? Oh, well, Smullen's very cagey, as I said. He's a crafty, cagey customer. And, oh, yes. Uh, he knows the game. Uh, he may be better suited to the kickboxing, as I said before, but he's starting to warm up to the boxing. Don't you worry about that. Oh, my word, yes. He, he's really undergone a renaissance, hasn't he? Oh, yes. It's well said, Robert. Oh, the, the straight left from Mac McMahon did the job. Oh. And with the right hand, too! Coming all over on Smullen! And uh, doing some damage then, McMahon, before they get tangled up, and Chris Anderson moves in. Beautiful punches thrown by McMahon. And uh, now uh, there's a... Uh, oh, Chris Anderson's uh, getting this Mullen uh, back into the... I thought he was taking him to the neutral corner for a minute. Cut over his left eye, Steve. Yeah, uh, Chris Anderson's happy that it's not uh, severe. And uh, the boys again pushed into the corner. Chris splits them up. He's doing a great job, Chris Anderson, with this fight. Oh, very, very experienced referee, Stephen. Knows every everything and there is to know about referee. Been at the job for years. And that oh, left hand from uh, McMahon again and followed up with the right. That cut over the left eye of Smollin has really opened up now, Stephen. Smullen again now, uh, slapping away at the back of McMahon uh, there, uh, just to let him know he's around. Smullen also has a bit of a problem, some of his hair's falling down over his face, which I notice has been causing him a bit of concern over his left eye. Yes, he's, sir. Uh, perhaps I noticed the man to be counted had to rearrange his ponytail during that last break between the rounds. Then you'll notice it is coming over his left eye, which is the one that's bleeding. Yes, and that's a, a concern. That, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Lewis is about to go and examine Smullen. He's coming over now, the physician in attendance, Dr. Lewis. 
He's going to take a look at the lead to see what the state of that eye is. Ice being applied by a man to be a cannon to the eye. Yeah, you see his, um, the doctor undertaking a very close examination. A very close examination of the men's mullet. Has the gloves on Dr Lewis, of course as he is now required to under the boxing and martial arts legislation, Stephen. And the rules and regulations that are uh, attached there too, Robert. That's right. I just wish the AMA would get wind of that. They don't, they don't seem to appreciate what a great job the boxing regulators do to ensure that the boxers get the best possible treatment at all times. And last round now. Oh, and it's going to be a big last round from these boys. Don't you worry about that, ladies and gentlemen. And fantastic viewing here for those who... Uh, they get to see this fight. Oh, they are pumped up. Look at this. Oh, Smollin. Look, a nice little uppercut there. Well, tangled up by McMahon. He's tying Smollin up here at the start of this round. Smollin didn't appreciate oh, it. And really, Smollin's... Really. Oh, he's, oh, he's got the petrol tickets working now, Smollin. He's uh, really worked up. Oh, he's really had a boost in energy. Oh, oh nice really slap there from to Smollin. Yes. He's going after him hard now, Smollin. No doubt about that. And the McMahon might have a slight cut to the corner of his left eye. Or oh, is it a cut or just a welt? I think it's a mouse, Steve. Could be a mouse falling yes. there. Just a small mouse. Yes. Uh, oh, low punch from McMahon just on the uh, lower belt of uh, Smullen. Smullen did whinge to the referee about it. He's uh, unhappy. His son's happy about taking a point Smullen. off. A point off? Oh, no, 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 he's not doing that. I didn't see that. He would have gone around to the uh, four corners of the ring to do that. But uh, uh, something happened there. He's bleeding now, Smullen. Also yes, from that inside that cut. eye cut. That's a big gash there. Don't know how that happened. I didn't see it during the fight. But uh, that's a nasty gash underneath his left eye but it's not dripping severely that's why he's able to see out of it at the moment Smullen he's not having any difficulty I don't think to any great degree well, I think the hair's more of a problem than the blood Stephen yeah I was about to say those hirsute problems that perhaps uh, I'm no uh, expert on the fashion industry but uh, you'd tend to think that that must be aggravating for him and even in training that would be an aggravation that uh, a haircut might be in order for the lad but that's a matter for for himself and his uh, people to look at. Well, as I said, I've noticed a man of Buchanan elegantly grooming his ponytail between rounds, Stephen, and that seems to have uh, generally enabled him to get by. Yes. These two boys are really uh, wanting to go on with the business. Oh, oh yes, a nice right uh, left, sorry, straight left from McMahon caught Smullins. I can't wait to get punch. back into it when Chris Anderson separates. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Been a very high standard fight, hasn't it? Steve? It has all the way through, Robert. It's been oh, oh nice. straight right nice. in the solar yeah. plexus. Oh, I think yes. it was by McMahon. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Cracker, Jack. Those punches have to be on the mark, and that was beautifully that uh, accurate. That uh, perfectly executed. Oh, and there's the bell. How did you score that round, Stephen? Well, look, that's a hard round to score. Smollin came out pretty hard, so he, he, he did. did a pretty good job, and, uh, and uh, McMahon finished uh, pretty well. But, uh, look, I've, I've given the fight to McMahon. It's, this is going to be very close again, I think, because it all depends on, on the style of fighter, what you actually like. Yeah. McMahon is a complete fighter. He's straight up and down. He's got some, some beautiful straight, uh, that straight left, the left jab, um, and his uh, right hand, uh, his combinations. Yeah, okay, the crowd cheering here, but... Uh, the actual, uh, that triple left jab he did, I think it was around about round uh, three or four, was just beauty. Oh, boxing. that was exciting, wasn't it? Boxing beauty to behold when you see uh, a fighter do that. And uh, textbook stuff, Stephen. Any young boxer could do well to watch that. No, oh, uh, no it was. He's got the excellent moves. He's been well treated by Bobby Scrivano in, in that stable. That's the right. first time I've seen this boy because I haven't had a chance to see him as an amateur, but uh, he's got a lot of skill, that lad. He has. So, uh, yes, I was just saying about McMahon, what a, a, a beautiful fighter is he going to be if he's not already? He's got the uh, the triple F jab, was a superb combination of punches. He often was able to get in close to Smullen and deliver three, four, five punches before getting into a tangle and the referee having to move in. And to any fighter who can deliver quick punches that are scoring punches close in like that uh, certainly has plenty of skill and he made the full use of his, of his um, uh, chances uh, from that point of view. Young Smullen, of course, comes from a kickboxing background as well at the, the start of the fight I thought he uh, wasn't suited to, as well to the boxing he seemed to be fighting within himself and uh, was uh, a little bit introverted in his style but he, he motored on towards the second half of the fight Robert and uh, and finished pretty strongly but I think overall Shannon McMahon showed enough here tonight to probably to get home with the result uh, as Mike Card says he has unofficially we will know very soon Stephen 
I agree with you. I thought McMahon was very exciting to watch, but nothing to be taken away from Smullen. He battled all the way through the bout, didn't uh, give up. He kept trying. He went in there. He had that cut over his eye and had a problem with his hair, and he just absolutely was intent on uh, giving McMahon an absolute... Yes. And uh, we're now going to Howard Lee for uh, the official decision. Have a big round of applause for the two Warriors as we go to the scorecards. As distinct from the first bout, we have a clear-cut winner in this bout. Judge Andrew Campbell and Judge Anika Williams have it 60-54. Replicated by Judge Gus Mercurio, 60-51. All for the winner on Pro Debut from the red corner, Shannon McMahon. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to change the pace. Ladies and gentlemen, the Peter Maniata Steam Promotions welcome you back to Centre Ring. Elvis has left the building, but Malcolm Bull is in Centre Ring. Our World Championship referee, Judges Gus Mercurio, back from the United States of America. Anika Williams and Andrew Campbell, your ringside physician, Dr. Peter Lewis, Vern Stewart in charge of the ladies, Brian Memory counting the knockdowns, Norman Liu, Dr. Norman Liu, representing the medical fraternity. Ladies and gentlemen, eight rounds of boxing for the vacant Victorian Cruiserweight Championship. Vacated by Costa Chondros. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first on my right, occupying the red corner. Born in Oakland, California. Then he moved to Long Beach, California. Then he headed down under to Brunswick, Australia. 32 years of age, wearing royal blue trunks now under the management of tommy aldemira and mario magris three professional fights tipping the scales last night at the yink hotel at 85 kilograms ladies and gentlemen representing usa and australia would you welcome bobby bam bam Patterson. and across the ring of my left occupying the blue corner from the Knox Boxing Club with Jim Slatter, Paul Layton and former British champion Ron Russell in the corner. He's a big favourite here at Melbourne. 13 professional fights, 7 wins, 1 draw, 1 technical draw, 4 losses. Ranked by the World of Boxing magazine, number 6, Cruiserweight in Australia. Ladies and gentlemen from Narry Warren, Lang Warren in Melbourne's eastern region, wearing black with white, would you welcome Nick Lights Out. Land Touré! Malcolm Mulder, eight rounds of boxing. For the vacant Victorian Cruiserweight Championship. Here we go. Okay, gentlemen, welcome to Centre Ring. Good luck to both your fighters. May the best man win. Big river shake hands here in front of like the last round. Okay, go back to the corners and come out of the bell. Well, what are we, where are we at? There's a sort of a catch weight area. A hybrid weight, I call it, Stephen. Oh, very well defined, Robert. Uh, with a bit of a doubt, the hybrid area and the scales. Well, Nick Lanteris has a huge following in this auditorium here, Stephen. The crowd are right behind him. He's a real hometown favourite, this fellow. And he certainly is, Lanteris. Now, Lanteris is a, um, a fairly uh, uh, straight up and down man. He concentrates very well, but Patterson has capabilities that are at both ends of the scale. He can be explosive or he can get blown out of the water very early depending on where he's at. Uh, he had a loss at the World Conference Centre, a convention centre back in May on a Curcio promotion, uh, Bobby Patterson. That's right, he did too. Yes. Uh, knocked down that night, he had the white tassel trunks on and this time he's gone for more basic navy blue, very highly raised around the chest region now, the upper, 
uh, stomach region around the pancreas area. I think he took on Adrian Stack here a few months ago too, didn't he? Yes, uh, was it Stack and Patterson? I can't remember. I think it could it have was. Been. Yes, that's right. Yes. And that, but now... Um, uh, now, uh, oh, but Lentouris, oh, and Patterson lifts Lentouris up, Lentouris to a punch. But and uh, Malcolm Buller there, a wry smile. He uh, did, didn't he? the yeah. of uh, Malcolm Buller there. I thought yeah. we were going to see a bit of uh, Highland uh, uh, lob throwing there for a minute. But Caber, no. Caber throwing it is, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's a piece of wood, isn't it? Uh, all due respect, so whichever way you want to look at it, it comes down to the... Uh, well, it certainly isn't a wrestling bout. Malcolm <laughs> Bulmer told the boys so. Well, what did he ever? No one certain terms, Malcolm, our uh, great referee. Oh, one know, of Australia's yeah. most experienced international referees. They refereed almost 40 world title yeah. fights, I think, hasn't he, Steve? He certainly has. A sucking yeah. right hand there to the body by Lentura. a bit below that belt, but that belt's very high on uh, Patterson's uh, ribcage there, that belt. Yeah, he seems to have his protector in an unusual way, doesn't he, Stu? Yes. Seems to be, uh, everything seems to be a little bit um, out of kilter there, but... Uh, yeah, uh, how appropriate, kilts and cobras. <laughs> That's right. Now, Land there now, there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, sort of whacking away at the, the Patterson Belly region, and just above and below that belt there, because that belt's so high up. But look at Lanturis's concentration, it's extraordinary. He does not take his eyes off Patterson. The intensity is just copybook. It is, it is. Well, he's always been a good demand with the concentration skills. Uh, and Lanturis, he's always looking out for danger. And uh, a very solid performer, Nick Lanturis, over a period of uh, three or four years in professional ranks. He uh, always, uh, not only does he concentrate, but, but he, he's really efficient when he gets an opening there. That, that's what he's looking for. Yes, he certainly is. And uh, now, uh, again, the boys grapple there. Uh, Patterson tried to come in with a flurry, but uh, the Lanturis saw him coming. He telegraphed those punches then, Patterson, and the Lanturis oh, yeah. tied him up. Far too obvious, wasn't it? It was. And uh, Lanturis had no hesitation in tying him up. That's right. Patterson over the top of the right hand, missed. And now comes in, he was going to throw a punch and then actually ran into Lanturis uh, because he kept moving forward, didn't throw any leather in the finish and got into a tangle. He did indeed. Jab. And that uh, Lanturis again concentrating, he's trying to work away with the left jab and then the worked underneath. Patterson looking at the referee saying, I don't like that. Uh, uh, but uh, the boys pushed each other away. Malcolm uh, again concentrating and Bakes uh, gets them. They weren't even together. And uh, a very uh, scrappy first round between these boys. How would you have scored that, Steve? Well, look, uh, Patterson was um, made errors. Uh, he missed. Tungsten missed and uh, changed his mind on some occasions. And then Tura stood back. So all you can do, basically, in a round like that, Robert, is to you know, even it up, I'd say. And that's where we're at. I think that's fairly accurate, Stephen. It was very early in the piece, and bear in mind this is an eight-round event, and uh, the boys were just uh, easing into it. As we were discussing before in the context of Alex Moon, uh, it really is an eight-round strategy that has to be uh, carefully thought out here, and you, in the early part of an eight-round bout, you'll uh, just... Take your, me me take your time, measure it out, don't do anything too hasty or rush. That's what both the lads are doing. No doubt about that, Robert. And, um, let's see, I think I've got a feeling this fight will start to motor up pretty quickly from now on. Uh, these boys won't uh, be have the patience to scrap. Oh, Patterson, uh, whoa, a little bit of the old uh, one-two there, the uh, Fred Astaire two-step there, Robert, for a minute there, Patterson. Well, he was foxing, Steve, and he was trying to lure... Um, he was trying to lure uh, Lanturis in. Oh, yeah, very tricky manoeuvres there from Patterson. He uh, was trying to lure uh, Lanturis into doing something that uh, well, he would have regretted, I think. He was foxing, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, appears to be a proponent uh, of that art form uh, there uh, when he does that to Patterson, no doubt about that. Bobby needs to... Look, Bobby really, at this stage of his career, is, uh, needs to have a big victory on the board. He hasn't had a significant victory uh, for some time and uh, he really needs to step up a bit now with his career because he's been around now for a while oh yes now Lanturis now trying to move in underneath but Patterson had the gloves the uh, forearms uh, uh, there close in and uh, Lanturis again moving underneath the raising the uh, the, uh, the the belt to higher up uh, the body of, uh, of uh, Patterson Patterson's defense is very good in that to that extent Steve and you're quite right the way he keeps the gloves up anticipates where any punches might come from and has his gloves protecting him accordingly. Yep, yep certainly does. He's probably, from that point of view, um, both fighters are uh, relatively defensive in their tactical manoeuvres, Robert, aren't they? Yeah, they are, they yes, yes. Well, obviously, at this stage of the bout, no-one's going to take any unnecessary risks. It's got a long <laughs> way to go. But just as you said that, of course, Patterson's opened up with a 
a right cross which uh, would have knocked the uh, the uh, the flag off the Queen Mary if it had landed. But, uh, oh, is that uh, a bit of trouble there in the uh, around the ring area? There a bit of noise uh, around there. I don't oh, know what that was. Probably just a flare or a table falling mm, over, Stephen. Yes. We wouldn't have any. Uh, some um, clown in the audience seems to uh, have some sort of. Uh, um, uh, cracker device there which uh, came off then but let's hope that's no problem so security men are moving around that area to see what was going on and they're having a word to a clown who's wearing a t-shirt so uh, uh, let's hope they can sort that out well the fight's in the ring Stephen, and that's Certainly the important is. thing we want to bear that out in mind yes the uh, two lads now seem to be just uh, it's getting a bit of a scrappy affair at this stage there haven't been too many definitive punches there haven't been too many combinations there hasn't been uh, not too much of the sweet science to date, but... Uh, uh, so you've got to remember, Bobby Patterson sport most of his boxing, I think, is a heavy, I think. He yeah, has, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot heavier weight than this, and so if he's taken weight off... Oh, he did get a low punch there around the um, uh, groinal region uh, there, uh, Patterson, but uh, he's fought a lot of his boxing in the heavyweight division, and uh, the lack of body weight, uh, do you think, uh, Robert, might have some effect? Uh, you don't oh, know, do you? Lance Juris is better effect. suited to this weight. Yeah, no doubt Lance Juris is a more natural cruiser, that's right. If you come down a division, it can be very difficult. You go back to the um, the early 70s, Stephen, when some of the light heavies used to go down to the middleweight division. Remember Dick Tiger from Biafra and uh, Emil Griffiths and uh, yes, Bob yes. Foster, who used to interchange between the weights, but you could quite noticeably see Archie the difference. Archie Moore? Correct, yeah, oh. that's right. Archie Moore, for instance, I think, fought in about six or seven different divisions throughout his career, uh, Robert. Well, Dick, that's right, he was probably the most versatile of them all. My, uh, I was a great fan of Dick Tiger, who regularly did both uh, middleweight and light heavyweight and would uh, take on uh, Emil Griffith or Bob Foster at Madison Square Garden that way, time and time again. As I was just, while you were talking there, Robert, I was waving at Stan Longanides, the eight times world uh, right. heavyweight uh, kickboxing champion who uh, has just recently completed acting in a... Uh, Victorian-based film, Trojan Warrior. That's so, right. I hear that was quite an exciting film. Stephen David Brereton, I think, was in that too, wasn't he? Yes, there was a big array of uh, local uh, people in there, and um, um, certainly uh, 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 going well. Good to see people in the martial arts sports are being able to uh, uh, transpose their skills into the acting sphere and uh, get people into the cinema as well as the, the boxing uh, veneer. It just puts Not more into the... Oh! And there's a Falling on top of Lanturis there as the boys went to ground. Lanturis wouldn't quite let go, but he was lucky Patterson didn't land with the knees on the upper chest region, Robert. Would have caused winding. Oh, it could have unsettled him. Patterson doing a bit of fancy dancing now. Oh, again there, he's uh, gone for the uh, a little bit of the uh, Fred Astaire, as I call it. Yep, the two-step shuffle. Oh, and... Um, that's what you do. Once you're in there, you can use those tactics to try and offset your opponent, catch them off foot somewhat. Well, referee Malcolm Bullner had had none of it, and he was right onto any of those antics. Hands up, hands up, come on, hands up. Nothing wrong, Robert, with trying to catch your opponent off foot if you get the opportunity, though. You're sounding like Mr. Football, the late Teddy Whitten there, Stephen. Oh, yes. <laughs> and there goes Lanturis working away. Yeah. Beautiful jabs from Lanturis, uh, some of which came through. Patterson Certainly with a right grin. A couple of them hit the belly quite well. Working overtime on that belly then, yeah, Lanturis. Beautiful boxing, that from Nick Lanturis. Yeah, yeah. A beautiful move. He used the ring well. He moved around. When he did throw the punches, he kept moving and uh, was able to still strike the mark. So a nice combination in on the belly of Patterson. And that this fight's crying out for someone to uh, take a bit of authority here now. There's no doubt about yes. that, Robert. It's time for one of them to assert it. You're quite right. Well, the slight low punch there from Lanturis, I think, hit the leg of um, uh, Patterson then. You notice Lanturis' corner have been repeatedly yelling at him in the last minute or two to keep the hands up. It's interesting, Steve, and if you look at the position of Lanturis' gloves... Oh, yes, yeah, dangerous because Patterson is a big hitter. Well, he only needs to get one in at the wrong wrong spot. Oh, yes, well, I think Scotty Brow used to say you're only one punch away from uh, destruction in boxing. That's so true, Stephen. Oh, my goodness, yes. Mm. I'm Ooh. talking about Mr. Hey! Brow. I don't think he's here tonight. Well, he's now on the boxing control board, of course. Yes, yeah, that's what I mean. He's not officiating here tonight, Scott, but uh, he's a person who's putting a lot of time into boxing. He trains boxers. He's on the board and uh, had a, an, an almighty majestic career as a uh, lightweight featherweight boxer through the ranks a great ambassador for the sport scott brown oh yes he was and patterson coming through high wide and handsome with the left charging through there and that um, 
telegraphed that to a certain degree. You could see him coming like the proverbial Southern Aurora then, Patterson. And, uh, that, the, that, uh, that is a problem with his whole style, Stephen. It's far too obvious. His opponent can always sum up what he's likely to do and can often be waiting for it. And he walks right into mayhem. And he, he's got to uh, shroud or mask his... Uh, yeah, mask his... Uh, mm. Mm tactics a little more in a more sophisticated yes. way yeah, he does need to do that he fights a bit so probably sometimes seems to think of himself as a bit of a veteran i think and he gets that right through on his face when someone manages to uh, throw in a scoring punch but i think he needs to perhaps think a bit more highly of himself and and to go in just a little bit harder there and back himself with his punches the other uh, thing i think he unwisely at times tends to initiate plays and he walks into trouble there he might be better advised to change his tactics and do the foxing himself and lure Lanturas in by running a bit more like a thief, going backwards and getting Lanturas off foot or unprepared. And that's often when you can get your opponent to walk into a punch. And I don't think that uh, Patterson has done that anywhere near as well as Lanturas. Lanturas' tactics have been the better of the two thus far, Stephen. Yes, no doubt about that. The tactics from the Lanturas corner have been exempt uh, for uh, the majority majority of the final, the first two rounds were scrappy. I didn't give that round to uh, to uh, Lanturis because he he put more thought into his boxing technique in that round. His movement was good. The jabs were very good. They were the scoring punches. Yes, no he, doubt about that. Uh, tied Patterson up uh, on numerous occasions, and Patterson now attempting to change his uh, boxing stance and style, trying to crouch, or trying to stalk Lanturis to a certain degree and move with him. Uh, I really do think he's got to concentrate on punching power, Body Patterson, a bit more and try and use some of the power that he does have. It's obvious his corner have had a talk to him in the break between rounds and told him he, he's not going to win it the way he's doing it. He won't, uh, Patterson. Uh, he will need to change tactics. He does have to throw more leather. You might notice in the first to three rounds of this fight, uh, Bobby hasn't been able to strike Lanturis with much leather. It's negligible uh, punches at all, Stephen. It's, it's been a very scrappy affair from his uh, perspective. He, he has very few effective punches thrown by him whatsoever. So Nick's really taking his fight up to Patterson. He's saying, well, this is how I'm, I'm making the fight from the style I'm fighting at this point. He is dictating the terms. Oh, he, gets, he gets an opening and he goes in there with a useful combination that uh, do get the scores, the, sc the scoring punches. A fresh air shot from Patterson. Wasting a lot of energy on that. An uppercut from Lanceris. And uh, welcoming uh, here to uh, ringside is uh, our fantastic uh, welterweight champion uh, there, uh, Julian Holland. Uh, good to see you, Julian. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, Steve. And uh, what a good night. That is a fantastic night, isn't it? And uh, we'll just get you keyed in there um, so we can hear your dulcet tones uh, and your expert comments there. And uh, uh, so far, uh, Robert and I have been commentating on the... Um, what we'd say, a bit of lack of activity there by Bobby Patterson. He needs to hit a bit harder, needs to mix his moves and punch up a bit more of his land. Tourist, for certain degree, is dictating the terms, isn't he? Yeah, uh, land here, he's, a, he's just that type of fighter. You know, he's just uh, he's just jabbing around, he's scoring points, and he's just making him miss at the right time. So I think, uh, you know, the other guys get a little bit frustrated. Yeah, he certainly is, uh, Bobby. Uh, Bobby's tried to change his stance a few times, but not to any avail, though. That's, oh! A big right hand from Bobby. This is where I said if he could punch a bit harder, he might get somewhere uh, with Glenn Tourist, but he does have to put pressure on physical pressure. He definitely hurt him with that shot. But, yeah. uh, it looks like Nick's got his... Uh, got his Looks like a bit, together. bit of a cut on the uh, left cheek of Nick that just was, below that the was a good shot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mouse coming yeah. forward yeah. 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 Mouse are a cut, Steve. My eyesight's yeah, no not as blood there. No blood forming. It's uh, definitely, definitely a mouse. Yeah. Definitely a mouse. Yeah. Yeah. But really, after that shot, uh, what Bobby needs to do is just really cut him off. Yeah. Th yeah. Throw him into the corner and just start start punishing him. Going, uh, going on with the business, he's just, yeah. yeah. He's yes. letting, him, letting him off, I think, a bit. He is. Far too easily. Yes, he certainly is. He's got to, he's got to, he's got to try and cramp Lanturis up a little bit too and uh, stop that movement, that ring movement. He's got to box him in and use his strength. Yeah, that was a good round. And uh, that's yeah. a big problem. Now, Julian, how are you travelling at the moment? You've been yeah, doing a fair bit of work in the gym, I believe, uh, down at the underworld there with Mr. Yeah. Dre Giles. Is that correct? Yes, I have, Stephen. Uh, you know, I've been training hard. This is my, uh, this is my first fight back. Uh, it's uh, big time promotions at uh, Festival Hall. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. It's, uh, well, the house of Stoush, yeah. Julian. It's oh. the true home of boxing. Yeah. I remember as a young lad going to TV ringside and the Friday night fights there. 
a rich tradition of boxing, and I know you'll have a ball there. Oh, yeah. Now, who are you up against, Julian, for our viewers? Uh, I'm with, uh, I'm fighting a guy called Joy Ali. He's, uh, he's a bit of a puncher. He's from Fiji, yeah. and, uh, you know, I'm going to have to keep the chin down. Yeah, he's a good boy. We've seen him. Yeah. I've commentated him. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, but look, I've got to get back. I've got to get back in the, in the, in the, in the, in the world ratings, and, uh, you know, these guys like that, I've just got to take straight out of there. So that's what yeah, I'm right. going to do. How many fights has I already had, uh, Julian? Uh, I think he's had about 17. Yeah, very fairly yeah. seasoned campaigner yeah. then, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, you know, as far as you're concerned at the moment, Julian, who are you after Joy Ali? So, you, you know, oh, we hope you get past Joy. Yes. Uh, what's your next move after that? Anything in mind, uh, if that works out OK for you? We'll be looking to uh, try and fight for the OPBF title. Good on oh, you. Oh, excellent. excellent. That's outstanding, get, Julian. Get back up in the top ten and uh, away we go. Yeah, that'll be great right. to see. That'll be fantastic. Well, so Nick Lanteras came in with a very nice combination there, including an uppercut against Bobby, which slowed him down a bit. No doubt about that, and uh, now all swag wide, high white and handsome there. That uh, he was off balance then, land tourist. He did get caught off foot in that occasion there, and uh, he didn't get land that punch on Patterson uh, with the left hand. Bobby Patterson with a bandage now on his back. Uh, I don't know what that's from. I don't know. I haven't received any medical opinion on uh, why that's there, but uh, that's his back here to gloves. Uh, you no, know, I don't know. I, uh, that could be something else. I'm not oh, too sure. But one of these wrestling uh, maneuvers have gone awry. Yeah. <laughs> I think with this fight too, we, we see Bobby, Bobby Patterson, he, he likes to box and move. He's a good fluent fighter. And I think it's making it a little bit hard because that's the way Nick fights. Nick yeah. fights around yeah. Bobby. So it's a little bit of a contrasting style yeah. where, where Bobby yeah. has to change now and, and, and force the fight hard. Yeah, that's right. Well, the Malcolm Bullard has just lost that bandage off his back there, Bobby Patterson. No blood there or anything. It must have been a scratch. But uh, we don't know the medical reason for that. We can't make guesses. I can see bits of it on the ring apron, actually. Yeah. Lovely body shot then from uh, Bobby. It was, wasn't it? Yes. And the boys now in a tangle, Malcolm Bull, and he'll split them up here. Venturis, uh, that, that well, he often gets that mouse starting under that part on both eyes uh, normally. Yeah, that's just because his left hand's uh, very low. Yes, yeah. yep. we've he noticed right his hand. corner, Julian, all night have been yelling at him to keep the gloves yeah. up. Um, it is an unusual style, Julian. Um, look, I just uh, know that um, uh, you know, in boxing, you think that probably that uh, you think you should change that style, keep the hands up a bit more. Well, it's it's hard when you have a style that you've had all, all your all your career basically to, to change. You know? and, uh, if it's worked for you, well, then you've got to really stay with it. Yeah, he was. It might work for him, but imagine if he if Patterson yeah. does get uh, connects are there yeah. and the hell will be all gone. It'll yeah. be uh, yeah. uh, the head will be sent to the rafters. You know, and that's the last thing you want to see. You can certainly see the contrast in styles there, Julian, can't you, where Bobby does keep his gloves up a lot higher yeah. than uh, yeah. Nick, doesn't he? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the cornering in there, uh, right next to us here at ringside there, yelling for uh, Nick to uh, put the gloves up a bit more. And, oh, the uppercut, the right hand. Well, uh, you know, when it is low, I suppose you can get the shoulder power into that uppercut from there, uh, Julian, can't you? Oh, yeah. Bend those legs and bring it up. To right. Yeah, driving through from the back of the heels, Julian. That's, that's where all the power comes from. So oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, my word. But, um, you know, Bobby, Bobby sort of seems to be doing better when he's forcing the pressure a little bit more, but uh, he steps back and then Nick, Nick just outboxes him. Yeah, that's right. No doubt about that. When he, when he feels the pressure, that's when he's winning the round. Yeah, he's always done better if he's gone, as you say, on the front foot there, Julian, and dictated the terms. Yeah. And uh, he hasn't done that enough tonight to really assert his authority on the fight, has he? Uh, no, he hasn't. No doubt about that, Dave. It's um, still, uh, uh, well, Antirus should probably say is, uh, he seems to be in front. Uh, to put it simply, just doing enough to keep in front, Patterson and... Uh, he just can't seem to take that next step. Do you think that Bobby sometimes seems to think of himself already as a sort of a bit of a veteran sort of... He should, he's got to go the next step. How can he get the next step, Julian? What can he do to go that next level? Is there anything he can do? Well, it's sort of, that's just up to the way he wants to fight, I suppose. Yeah. And, um, you know, like, um, I think, see, that's where, I, again, what, what I was saying before with the contrast of styles. Like, Bobby likes to be flashing and, and move around. And it's not really suiting someone that does the same thing. thing yeah. So he has to change to be a forcey fighter. And it's not, you know, like he doesn't really, he's not used to doing that. You, yeah. have to, you have to work on it in the gym before you can change it in the fight. Yep, no, that's, uh, that's a good point there. Bobby's a little bit more inconsistent yeah, yeah, uh, in his yeah. uh, career. He's, um, he often, um, he's um, being prone to either, you know, banging someone up or he gets banged up. You know, there yeah. doesn't seem to be much yeah. there. This is a very more consistent fight for him. Yeah. Oh, he's doing a great job. Oh, no doubt about that. He yeah. seems to have come out this round yeah. with a lot yeah. more purpose, hasn't he? Yeah. 
Yeah. That's what he's got to do. He's got to step that's across right. him, cut him off, yeah. shorten him up. Yep. Yes. Set the agenda. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. That's and very important. With, with a fighter like Nick, start from the body, work up. That's mm. right. Yeah. Get the odd blow or two that stuns him or slows him down, that's creates right. an opening that you can exploit. Work. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah, he needs to get a bit more body work around the Lanturas rib cage. I think. Yeah, see if he can give the short ribs a bit of a going yeah. over, or if he can get him in a corner or on the ropes where he can um, let a few go yeah. that'll unsettle him and then capitalise on that. Yeah. yeah. And, and mix it up a little bit. You know, a couple yeah. of punches towards the solar plexus. Just a couple around the rib cage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, work upstairs, go down, just to mix it up a bit and then try and not get into tangles like we're in at the moment well, where we Yeah. And that's why like, see that's that's sort of Nick's fight. You know when Nick will stand there, he'll, oh, yeah. he'll be watching he'll oh. be watching for that right end. He knows that's gonna come so we'll get under that every time. Yeah. Basically then and then hold you. And yeah. that's the way oh. he fights. He does. No, he certainly does. And, uh, something I've noticed with Nick right through the bout he's had that ability frequently to anticipate what Bobby's going to dish out yeah. and he's ready for it and takes the appropriate evasive measure yeah yeah, mm. yeah. There's no doubt about that tell us Julian we were commenting earlier on about Patterson having boxed of course at the heavyweight division do you think coming down a weight division would have much of an effect on him uh, I think it's better for him. Yeah. I, I yeah. think he looks, he definitely looks better at this weight. I think right. he looks quite good. Um, you know, when, when they, like, when they're fighting heavyweight, they're giving yeah. away probably, you know, 10, 15 kilos. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. This way he gets to fight men in about roughly his own size yeah. now, doesn't it? Yeah. As opposed to uh, a bigger heavyweight, like a Tommy Hammer or someone of that ilk, who uh, was a better part of 110 kilos. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that awful guy that he fought. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's right. right. Uh, yeah, Clay Ortega-Mui, Orta, Ortega who we were talking about just the other night at the um, when we were working at our awards at the, the Victorian Boxing, Boxing Trainers League. League. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, premises of Hank Stanley the other night. Yes. Yeah. Champion. He was indeed. Still is. The vocal as always. Yeah. Yes. Making comments about your physical yeah. appearance, Steve. <laughs> That's what. Well, he said he was quite surprised because I haven't seen him for about a year and uh, indicated to him that my training with Rain Mako at the Pump Gymnasium has been working out very well for me. It's uh, well, it's taking a lot of body fat out of my physique and uh, giving you a little bit more stamina, Steve. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, a couple of nice uppercuts to the belly from Nick Lanturas working on Bobby Patterson while we were talking there. Yes. Quite effective. Very effective. Well, another and good round. It was, wasn't it? Yes. Like, Nick's, Nick's still doing just enough um, yes. you know, with the scoring yeah. shots. It's not, they're not hard shots. They're just no. scoring. They're annoying. Uh, scoring shots, really, and, yeah. and, but they're taking the points, and, and, and um, that's where you know, Bobby's. You know, from now I feel he, he really has to up the work rate. Yes. Start yeah. hacking him off, working him in there, hitting him hard. Yeah, he's, uh, Bobby now probably has to get a bit explosive. Now he's got to take yeah. a few risks. Yeah. How did you saw that round, Steve? Uh, I actually evened that one out. I, I just couldn't really split them there, but I've got um, Lanturis about three points up overall over a six-round uh, situation. I've got uh, yes. Lanturis. Uh, 60, 57, Patterson, and I think that'll be pretty close to what the judges have got, yeah. uh, given the way the yeah. scoring's been done here tonight, and given the way that fight's okay. going. Okay. Well, going on with what you were saying, uh, Julian, it's obvious that Bobby Patterson's really going to have to turn it up a ratchet or two, isn't it? Oh, yes. when, when you're this far behind in a fight, then, as Steve was saying, you've got to start taking risks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because it'd be, you run out of rounds otherwise. We saw it earlier on when Ben Spullen took a little bit of time to get going, and we saw it again when uh, yeah. uh, uh, the other boy, uh, uh, McFadden, and nearly... Uh, they had to a motor home, uh, you know, when you've got four or five rounds, you've really got to step on the mark from the word go. You've got to keep the time, the judge's clock sticking over, the point system sticking over. Now, Patterson now, can he, can he make an impression here? He must take the fight here right up to Lanturis to have any chance of success here. I think he's being a bit too cautious yeah. now. He, he, yeah. And that Monturis now, he won't take a risk. He doesn't have to, really, because he probably knows he's two or three points up, maybe depending on which judge has got it. But, uh, uh, oh, now, nice slapping punch there, the rib cage. Uh, that always a sting. Nick. Yeah, it makes you sting. And the Patterson trying to work downstairs there, but uh, not much avail there. Oh, nicely moved to there by uh, Patterson there. A quick move of the head. Just got out of the way of that blow. But you've got to do something after it. Well, that's right. He's got to back up. He's uh, a nice move out the way, but you need to follow up with the, 
you know, uh, a nice punch coming in to uh, keep that uh, keep the judges uh, ticking over with the points. It's well, very I don't important. think he's landed a punch at all this round of speak well, so far. Well, hasn't he hasn't. He's, he's um, yeah, you know, he needs. He's got to get more ag oh, uh, aggressive here. Uh, uh, Patterson's protectors very high, Julian. And I think the trunks have fallen down. The protectors <laughs> where it was at the start. Well, it the is trunks right. have got a bit of brewer's droop yeah. in the back there, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, he's. I think he he started off. Those trunks seem to be in an unusual position to start off with. They were well and truly nearly up around his armpits. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, there's only so much of the body you can protect, isn't there? Yeah, well, that's sure right. going. He made him miss then and uh, threw a nice try, uh, short right hand, which was a, a, yeah. was a good, good call there, Julian. And that, those trunks that the Patterson have gone on to go yachting, you know, I'd say, or some other pursuit. But no, the protectors, uh, you know, are probably the correct position. The trunks have slipped. And a lot of fighters, Julian, don't like to have the elastic band around the, um, the, the the belly anyway. They prefer it over the protector, don't they? Yeah, yeah. And that for you know reasons for what the breathing and blood su blood supply. I'd I say. think it comes down to look. <laughs> <laughs> fighters are all veins, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> but what Patterson's got there at the moment ain't exactly going to do much in the fashion stakes. I don't think at all. Well, that little showing. But uh, nice uh, right hand again. He's not as elegantly groomed as Jimmy Cheetah, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> he is the Grovedale fashion plate, uh, Jimmy Titus, no doubt. Well, along with the other notable of Grovedale, Gary Ablett. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, another, yes. another round for me. Yeah, yeah, I don't think there's so any doubt about that, is there, Julian? And uh, he's, Nick's Nick's round. <laughs> he's just not making an impression here, uh, Patterson. He's on my card four points behind. It's going to be very difficult for him, uh, no doubt about that. Patterson barely got a scoring uh, punch in at all, though, that, if, if any, at that round, Julian. I thought he just got far too hesitant, didn't he? Yeah, we started making him miss, but, you know, like, yeah. you've got to do something after that. You've got to make him pay. You would yeah. more than likely say that if the uh, Langturis had been more aggressive there and had probably taken a couple more risks himself, get a few punches, and he would have nearly made it a 10-8 because yeah. of Patterson's inactivity. But 10-9 uh, is probably the way it goes, then. I think that's how it had to be called, Steve. Yeah. Mm, yes. No doubt about that. Well, we've seen the tragic uh, situation. Dallas Costello, uh, Julian, to see him now. He's here tonight. He looks to be OK. Dallas got a new name now, Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel Stewart. He's now a trainer, is he? Well, he's now, now a matchmaker <laughs> for... Uh, Big time promotions, and That's basically right. he doesn't even talk to me anymore. Is that good? <laughs> he's got the suit on, has he? He's got the suit and the tie. <laughs> no, he's going great. Yeah, it's good to see him going good too. No, he, good to he was a fantastic fighter. Oh, magnificent! Uh, his career got got cut short, and um, no doubt about that. But it's just a the just last time we were here, we watched him in that great bout with Brendan Batty that went the distance, and that was a fantastic bout, one of the more memorable ones this year. In fact, uh, there was a nomination that fight for fight of the year. It was yeah. under the nomination, yeah. 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 And they just got. But even well, still, we can't uh, give a result of it uh, as they're confidential as we know at the moment. But it was nominated. I was about to say he got pipped at the post. I wasn't about <laughs> to breach any confidence. A bit of wrestling going on there from these two, but they're back into it. Bobby's just got to cut him off now. That's right. Bobby, Bobby has to throw some no, very hard yeah. leather very quickly here. He's got a minute and a half to do something. And Lanturis now being sent to the neutral corner. There is a problem. Oh, yes. The, uh, is it the shoelace or the belt? The belt's in all sorts of trouble at the back. In fact, it's um, coming loose there. In fact, he had a good chance of losing the uh, protector as well as the trunks. Shoelace. Shoelace. Shoelace yeah. well. Although uh, Malcolm Bulner did redress Patterson then uh, uh, with his uh, attire. The flagging trunks were attended to, gentlemen. <laughs> and that, uh, oh, Patterson again, a uh, bit of a goose step or moonwalk there from uh, Patterson to try and... Uh, shake up the land tourists but doesn't seem to be phased by it at all gentlemen a bit of foxing i think steve i mean that's um, that's well you know i think uh <laughs> looks good earlier on yeah, in a fight but gee yeah. whiz at this time of the night when you've got to score uh, points to try and win a fight that's not going to get the young bob anywhere there i don't think no it's not the way to do it is it well you know it, it's, there's, there's nothing wrong with it um but i think you know he, he might think uh, naturally that he's actually in front. Uh, oh dear. So, 
I felt though when he was engaging in those antics, Julian, it wasn't for any purpose. It just sort of danced around without trying to lure, lure Lanturas in or Well, that was the purpose, Robert, to uh, try and catch him off foot and you see if he'll drop his guard a bit and the move the wrong way. I like it. Because if you, uh, <laughs> if you zig when you should zag, you can end up on the floor in uh, this uh, level of competition. We all know that. <laughs> Was it zig or a zag who's discredited these days, Stephen? <laughs> I'm not going into that. Right. <laughs> so, uh, oh, that uh, was the right hand that it's taken eight rounds for Bobby to find that uh, over-the-top right hand, which he's renowned for. That was the idea, yes. And uh, unfortunately missed for him. Oh, and Terrace with some thumping uh, uh, body shots. Oh, and then Terrace now has decided to up the tempo. Very smart boxing from Lanturis. He wasn't happy with that uh, savage over the top right that Patterson threw because if it had a strike, he would have driven his head in the canvas. So he thought, well, look, if you're going to throw heavy artillery at me, I'm going to respond. Boy, he let fly, didn't he, Stephen? He certainly did. That's what he had to do. That's and right, the, my word. And that's the sort of uh, situation. I, I feel Bobby should have, uh, should, should have flown back at, at him with a combination yeah. himself. He had an opportunity in that, that yeah. sort of spray of punches from Nick to, to pop one in, and he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. As you say, Julian, he let a good opportunity. Oh, 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 oh. A uh, couple of punches thrown after the bell from these boys there. Oh, uh, a warning them to cut that out. Oh, 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 they're right, they're right. They're OK, right. I think there's a little bit of uh, grandstanding going on here, but uh, there's nothing in it. I mean, Lane Turris, I don't think, heard the... He was already into a punch when the bell went, and Patterson oh. just got a little bit carried away with it. I think it made no difference, really. There was no yeah. need for anyone to get aggravated there. Nick. Nick's not too happy about it. He no, he's not. On. He did, didn't he? Yes. Yeah, yeah. my word. Yeah. Well, he thought that uh, Patterson following up on a mistake was unnecessary because yeah. Patterson took the view, oh, that was deliberate, yeah. you know, and it wasn't. I mean, when Turris, is, he follows the rules and regulations. He's never been known to yeah. be a, yeah. Yeah. a fighter to uh, try and uh, besmirch the rules, Robert or Julian. Oh, absolutely not. He's a man of the utmost integrity, Steve. Oh, well, if you can get away with it, you know. <laughs> You've got to have a crack. <laughs> Sounds like a football club or two, we know, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's right, gee whiz, right. this week has been a big week in sport. There's been oh. people in a bit of bother and clubs and, oh, boy. Especially my club. Oh, you're Carlton men, yeah. Julian, eh? Well, yes, yeah. well, we've got their problems, but it just goes to show, and this is, uh, well, it's the issues that I do discuss on Sport 97, on Sport and the Law, on the, during the week, on my nighttime the program to half an hour per week, is these very issues about following the rules. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember a certain football club president saying there are no rules. <laughs> 20 years ago, yes. But whether or not you could come out and say that sort of thing now, though. Is no. Kid James in the ring? He's going to hand the trophy out. Howard Lee coming over. Corner. On the corner. The glamour. My word. Done a wonderful job on Stephen here. He's uh, a ball of muscle these days. Uh, yeah, so, I, so it's very important for uh, people to do resistance training if they want to talk about physical fitness and boxing. Uh, Julian, I might say that... Uh, uh, down at Pumped in South Melbourne, uh, where uh, Rain uh, trains uh, myself amongst other people and uh, there are other people down there who we'll go to, we'll talk about that in a minute. Howard Lee giving the scorecards there. Ken Jones in the ring with the belt. Ladies and gentlemen, we have unanimity. All three judges see eye to eye. Judge Henry Campbell, 79, 73. Gus McCurry on the same card, 79, 73. Judge Henry Moore in the final card. 1872, ladies and gentlemen, would you congratulate the new Victorian Cruiserweight champion, Nick
Ronnie Russell for, uh, for being there for me. He's been there for two years in the making and good work, mate. Uh, all my corner men, my supporters, friends and family, thank you very much. And that's it. Nick Lantouris, Victorian Cruiserweight Champion. As Kenny James said, thank you, Ken, for the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, how about three chairs, one chair for our genial promoter. Tonight, his 10th big show in Melbourne, his fourth big show here at the hall where Sir Robert Menzies used to deliver his political speeches. Mr. Peter Marianas, congratulations. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone for turning up tonight and supporting the event. The fight is called the Sergi Fight Night. Robert Sergi was a big supporter of boxing. He used to help the young up-and-comers on the way through. I mean, it's easy supporting the superstars when they're superstars, but when you help the people from the bottom and then help them get up, that's when you really respect the effort that you put in. Now, the Sergi family are going to be promoting a trophy tonight. It's going to be the Sergi Cup Night. It's going to be once a year and it's up to the family who they think should win the award. He doesn't necessarily have to win the fight, but exactly it's up to the family. So that'll be after the semi-main event. The main event fighter can't win the award. So, okay, I won't hold you too much. I'd like to thank everyone for turning up and it should be a good night. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we introduce the fighters in this interstate contest, Would you welcome in the blue corner the man with the red cap with the white trim on the top. In 1984, he represented Australia at the Los Angeles Olympic Games with Jeff Finnick. Would you welcome, ladies and gentlemen, former Australian professional lightweight champion, 16 fights, 16 wins, and a seven-time Australian international amateur boxing representative. Would you welcome Shane Knox. Shane Knox in the blue corner. Ladies and gentlemen, when you introduce in the blue corner from Northgate in Queensland, getting 73.95 kilograms, wearing black trunks with Shane Knox, his mentor. Would you welcome, making his professional debut, Tim the Butcher Bud. B U W -D, Bud. And across the ring, ladies and gentlemen, it's a cauldron of fire here tonight. He's had 24 amateur fights, 16 wins, wearing trunks of red with white piping. He's from the Knox Boxing Club. He hails from Cranburn, Victoria, standing 73.10 kilograms. He's known as Porky Daniel Lumber. The old ringside judges are Jasper Curio, Anika Williams, Andrew Campbell. The timekeeper of the bell is Damien Membry. The referee in charge is Chris Anderson. The promotion. It's all yours. Here we go. And thank you for your boys. You know the rules. After the bell, protect yourself at all times. Listen to me at all times. Understand? Good luck, boys. Oh, doing about the three or four fights out of the six fight card. Yeah. Well, this is going to be a war with this fight. Two young kids coming into the game. Uh, Tim Budd. 
the Butcher Bud uh, there in the uh, blue corner, Black Trunks, and uh, Daniel Lovett, who has an enormous following here tonight. A lot of uh, supporters. Very good. Well, uh, young female supporters here. Yeah, and uh, a lot of males there too, uh, from his gymnasium, uh, no doubt, or his area that support him. Uh, heavily illustrated uh, Lovett uh, with the... Uh, uh, on the left the shoulder region. I think both shoulders are illustrated. He has that exotic hairstyle. Still. Uh, he does, yes. End around the deltoid muscle there, uh, a fair bit of uh, uh, artwork. Uh, but now I try to work in on uh, uh, young uh, Lovett. And uh, taking his time, uh, Bud, he's not uh, concerned about the welfare of support here for uh, uh, young Lovett, his opponent, who came out of the red corner there. Lovett has the uh, basically burnt orange trunks uh, with uh, white uh, adornments and, and lateral uh, stripes, Steve. Oh, lateral stripes, are they? I thought yes. the minute it was like a palm tree adornment, they're lateral stripes, I see. They are lateral stripes. And uh, young uh, Bud uh, wears the traditional all black trunks uh, with uh, his uh, protector there already being displayed. Uh, the boys are in a, a feeling out session here. They're fighting around about the middleweight uh, level, about the 73 kilo plus mark. And uh, Bud, oh, uh, straight right from Bud missed. Uh, it was a nice follow-up punch to his uh, left jab. This looks like it's going to be a really exciting bout. They're both getting right into it, Steve. Yeah, Bud's hacking around. Not at all. Bud's actually the heavier man at the 73.95, yes. I noticed. He is, yes. You wouldn't know it. If you looked at him, you'd say love it was probably a couple of kilo heavier. Both lads immaculately turned out. Look at the oh, physique. Oh, swing left there. hand from uh, Lovett didn't do any damage. And, uh, oh, Bud came in beautifully there with that uh, straight right. That was a lovely punch. He laid it right on, didn't he, Stephen? On the ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. He looks a solid boy, young Bud. Uh, we we'll love it. A uh, nice little uh, a short left to the uh, jaw region. That was a nice punch. And a lot of support here tonight. The uh, rafters will come off here soon with the amount of uh, barracking that's been going on in this traditional town hall in the eastern part of Melbourne. Love it now where they're chipping away at the, the body area of the pub. Oh, a big right hand. Oh! oh. oh. And uh, a couple of thrown in the ring. A bump in trouble. Is that off to the ground? Some in the audience threw a plastic cup into the ring. The count's being applied. And he's OK. I think he's all right. He's... Uh, It'll be all right, but some clowns who are cupping the ring uh, from the uh, Lovett contingent. He's trying to follow up on oh, Bud. Will the bell save Bud? Another nice round of this round. He goes home again. The referee will stop it. Then he gets hit again. The ref will stop it. You oh, can't think he's gone. He got a jolting punch to the jaw. He's in a bit of trouble. Chris Anderson said no. I'm not going to let you go on, son. I knew he'd stop it. He was always going to stop it when he popped that big right hand to the jaw the second time. No doubt that was the right thing to do. Dr. Clean Ellis is now checking Bart out. Now, yeah, he's uh, at the hand on the shoulder, getting him uh, moral support as well as medical attention. So they'll be checking him out for the vital signs that the physician in attendance is required to uh, conduct certain cognitive tests to make sure the box is okay. So, no, that's correct, Robert. No worry about that. Here we have uh, Daniel Lovett yeah, yes, coming across there. Uh, and uh, he's a tough uh, lad. An uh, 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 outstanding array of combinations. He's really yeah, lovely yeah. lad, and Jimmy yeah. Slater would be very happy with that young lad coming through. Oh, very impressive indeed. No doubt why he's got the following he has here. That was a most impressive performance. Yes, oh, yes, a superb effort. Uh, very strong boy. Uh, the Slater, now uh, yeah, Jimmy Slater here has tried to cool him down. There's another problem out here. Is there at the back? Not yes. too sure. Is there a problem? Yes, there is. Uh, they were very vocal and a very aggressive crowd, the Lovett crowd behind us. Oh, weren't they? They were very much clear man, weren't they? Uh, uh, you'd, you'd seem to think that um, uh, sometimes the uh, barracking, uh, is, uh, as long as it remains positive, it's a good thing. Oh, I think it's an essential part of exuberant boxing, Stephen, is to yes, have the fans showing their support, really getting into it. It creates what atmosphere you really need in a uh, auditorium like this. Yeah, we certainly do. We want to make sure it stays positive, though, Robert. That's the main thing. Oh, I don't think in any way it was uh, lacking in positivity, Stephen. These are just exuberant fans letting the world know who they support. Yeah, I don't know about that, but uh, some of them were, uh, were uh, one in the year. Yeah. The Well done. 
Now that was an outstanding performance, and the crowd are still boisterous, aren't they, Stephen? Yeah, they are. Young Bud is nice loud stuff. He'll look. He'll bounce back from that. Oh, I'm sorry. First of all, look, I understand you guys, I understand you're cheering, but the problem is you've got drinks in your hand and they're getting in front. So you want to let your friends speak? Can you guys sit down first, please? There's people behind you, sit down. Can we just have your indulgence, please? Daniel was an even first round for about two minutes, then you unleashed some big headshots. Congratulations there, and you brought half of Cranbourne in with you tonight. Yeah, no, it was good. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, Jimmy, for all the time you put in with me training. Mum and Dad for keeping me on my diet and making sure I train, and just all my mates who had come down and helped me out. Tim Bud, uh, bad luck, Tim. You came into a lion's den here tonight. Your first professional fight. You showed a good style there, Tim. We'd like to have you back in Melbourne down the track. Bad luck tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming tonight. Uh, here, he's got some great supporters down the front here. Um, he's a very strong boy. Uh, yeah, well done. Well done. I want to have another go at him. Okay, Tim Bud, a very gracious man from uh, Queensland. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's a car out the back of Commodore, NDO384. It's blocking outside. Remember the Mul Mulvern Police Station is next door. The Commodore NDO384, a reddish colour. Must be moved, otherwise it'll be towed away. And would the hall keeper please go to the front entrance again? The hall keeper please go to the front entrance. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, eight rounds of boxing. Team promotions, Peter Maniatis. Welcome you to our semi-main event. Eight rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division for the South Seas Interim Heavyweight Championship. When the bell tolls, your man in charge of the action, Malcolm Bullner, judges Gus Mercurio, Andrew Campbell and Anika Williams. Timekeeper Damien Memory, ringside physician Dr. Peter Lewis. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet and greet on my left, occupant in the blue corner, on the comeback trail after 13 years in semi-retirement. Trained by Keith Kidmark with James R. Lee in the corner. From Lanceville, Victoria, former Victorian amateur, heavyweight champion in professional boxing. Three bouts, two wins, scaling 102.90 kilograms, wearing Essendon Bombers colours, red with black. Would you welcome Peter Spud Murphy? Murphy! And across the ring in the red corner, Tommy Mura, Dennis Bado, his mentors. Ladies and gentlemen, born in Samoa, then resident of New Zealand, now living in Roxburgh Park, Victoria. He's met the big guns of Australian heavyweight boxing. Colin Wilson, who challenges Jimmy Thunder, James Ali, to name two, and Vin Servi, all heavyweight champions of Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, 33 years of age, scaling a massive 110 0.55 kilograms, wearing white with a touch of black. Originally Tommy Hammer, reverting to his native Samoan name tonight, Pumano Matthew Otto. Malcolm Boulder, your referee. Eight rounds of boxing for the South Seas Interim Heavyweight Championship. Welcome to Sunday ring, gentlemen. Let's have a good, clean fight. Obey my instructions at all times. Shake hands if we come on fighting for that last round. 
Shaker has now go to their corners. We come out fighting at the bell. Good luck to both the fighters. Normally the smaller man because he's weighing in at lock and X proportions of about 110.5 kilograms. So Julian, a big man, no doubt. And uh, Peter Murphy looking like a bad guy out of a James Bond movie, I reckon. He's fighting in at 102.9 kilos. Uh, ready to go too, Peter no Murphy. One. Oh, word. He's champing at the bit. And that now, um, uh, Matt Awardo wearing the traditional black and white gloves. He normally wears those gloves. He does. He's got his own pair of gloves, I think. Uh, Murphy looking aggressive early. And uh, he's got uh, Matt Awardo on the back foot there. Uh, uh, Murphy, big grin on his face. Uh, having a good look at the uh, Pumona. Oh, and the this is going on. This is a slugfest. They're right into it, aren't That's they, Julian? Like. Yep. Like. Murphy's enjoying himself, no doubt. Having a big grin every now and then. Oh, yes. Yeah. Having a good time when the tongue comes out, too, from the, uh, the man in the blue corner. I think he's had a few of these. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, took a fairly tough customer, Peter Murphy. He's come out swinging. They're slowing down a little bit now. Oh, good right hand. Good Excellent right hand. Oh, another one. Matt Awardo could be in trouble here. Murphy's getting him through. Murphy is way into that big frame. Oh, another good right to the side of the head there. And uh, pinpointing his punches to the uh, belly region, uh, working upstairs as well. By God, the belly shook with that one there, Stephen, <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> they might have been an old Alka-Seltzer advertisement. <laughs> That midsection of Matt Auto already receiving a workout. Yep, I think it will be for this bout's over even more. Thanks for big shots landed, yeah. Yeah, oh, quite man. a few of those did go. Oh. Murphy Hammer. grinning again. Yeah. He's got oh. that cheeky grin, hasn't he, oh, Stephen? He certainly has. Well, that's because Matt Auto threw that uh, right hand in in a sloppy fashion, went straight over the top of the head, never looked like striking Murphy. Yes. I worry about uh, Matt Auto's stamina. That's what worries me. What do you know about Murphy? He was out of uh, retirement for a while, wasn't he, Stephen? Uh, yeah, I don't know a lot about the, the man, but uh, he's certainly uh, finding his feet here in a hurry. He's coming. Oh, right hand again has caught uh, uh, Matawudu uh, across the ear hole. Some nice scoring punches there. He keeps dropping them in, doesn't he? He certainly does. These boys aren't moving much. They're going to turn it into a telephone box affair if we don't watch it. Like that great Cheetahs Duraco fight at Fort Knox oh, last year, Stephen. Yeah, that that the, was Julian, wasn't it? Yeah, could have cut the ring in, in quarters that night. My word, and you never thought Cheetahs would win that one, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did have my doubts, Robert, but I was proved to be incorrect at the end of the evening. As usual, you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, Murphy getting right into the business here. Oh, oh, another 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 oh again. Oh, oh in the, the belly. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 in trouble, man. That's in trouble. I tell you what, Malcolm's having a good look at him to see if he can stand oh, up here. Yeah. Oh, he's trying to fight back courageously, Matt Wardu. Good comeback. Oh, Matt great Wardu. comeback to spin off Big Murphy. He took about five serious yeah. punches in that exchange. Oh, and that oh, 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 oh. Murphy exerting more authority, Julian. How are they looking yeah. to you there? Yeah, I oh, definitely. Uh, he's landing. He's, he's really, really. He really is, isn't he? he uh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt about that. That was an exciting round from Murphy. Uh, I think uh, Keith Moss would be absolutely right with that round. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. doubt about that. An enormous yeah. effort first up. And uh, you, uh, look, I suppose these big guys, I mean, to be in real shape, you've, you've got to do a lot of work in the gym, don't you, Julian? Would they get the chance? I mean... With any fight, any fight. Yeah, well, anybody, yeah. you know, but uh, the, the big guys, uh, these guys... Uh, he just think you'd need more time, I mean, it could oh. be across the board. But well, you'd know full well from your <laughs> vast boxing career, Stephen, that you can't go in the ring unless you're totally fit. And the, the big boys, you know, they, they get tired quicker. Yeah, they do, don't and they? This is eight threes, it's a long time. It is. Um, well, this is it, they've got to keep those hands they're up. They're blowing now, so I don't, yeah. think it, I don't think it'll go the distance well, somehow, but... I no. tipped the short uh, finish yeah, to this about yeah. earlier on. Yeah. I think you've been a bit surprised by how aggressively Murphy's come out and got punches landing everywhere, Stephen. I was it? shocked, actually, yeah, because yeah, um, yeah. I've seen Matt Awardo uh, do exactly that last year. He, he was uh, get everything but to push Hadara through the canvas. Oh, 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 Murphy, come out Murphy. big time! Peter oh. Murphy on fire here tonight at Melbourne Town Hall. Did he connect then? He stunned the lad. He had Matt Awardo straight back into those ropes in Murphy. Yeah. Oh, he's a big hitter. Oh, he's got another nice right. He's getting there. through the defences of Matuato. He's not yeah. keeping his hands up enough. He's been slugged into the corner here. Penamuno. 
Oh, oh. Any oh, number of connecting punches there. Yeah, oh, yeah. He just pulling him, Murphy. He, he did. Murphy really lined him up he, there. He comes in, he really flings that hook. There it is again. He swings it around, him and, and he's just hitting... Uh, hitting just auto Automatu yeah, grants him across the forehead then with bleeding, that punch. Bleeding profusely from the nostril, Automatu, Steve. Uh, yeah, you see, I didn't yeah. see that, but... Uh, yeah, what a good look. He's bleeding from the nostril. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good shot. <laughs> oh, yes, an excellent shot there, Julian. Well, good to see a big bloke go in and punch to the body then follow up with a hook you don't see it much he's just doing it every that's uh well well skilled by Pete Mark you're right you're right Julian his combinations have been really good haven't they every opening he follows up on as you say he'll get one in the belly one to the head he's mixing his punches he's yeah you don't see it on big ways no you don't do you no. he's getting a bit tired though Murphy now oh, yeah. he's starting to get sloppy so he's put a lot into that first round it's only the second round yeah <laughs> he's got eight rounds boys. <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> Gee whiz, could end up going a distance. They'll be gleaming up against the ropes, having a crack at each other. But uh, that's a, a lot of physical pressure here for them. As you said, Julian, they're huffing and puffing already, aren't they? Oh, Tommy uh, Panamono uh, ordered Matt Awardu, who was coming home. Uh, oh, got a bit of stamina here. Threw some leather, but didn't hit anything with it. Oh, a nice, nice left there. Now he's been punished on the ropes and missing. Murphy got a magnificent left in that really shook all the yeah, The actually, ebbs and flows of a fight like this are amazing, aren't they? They're, oh, they are. They're actually basically oh, both landing with big, big body shots. Yeah. Uh, and Matt Awardo has got in some big uppercuts here. On the Murphy, who's now leaning into a Matt Awardo in the neutral corner. What's Baller going to do with him? No, he's Let letting him, him go on. Let him fight. Let him fight, Stephen. Yeah, he's an experienced man. He's going to break him up now because they're leaning on each other now. No, he's going to let and him go on. And Murphy is blowing hard and blowing very hard. He's a real good blow now. Oh, nice oh, straight left. Nice Into the jaw reef. Oh. And, right cross. Oh. and an uppercut from Murphy. Beautiful punching. And mixed that up, Julian, like you said. Mixed it up beautifully then. A real mixed bag of punches. Great to see. Boy, as you say, though, Julian, they are huffing, aren't they? Look oh, at them. Yes. Doing a great job, Murphy, uh, and... Uh, oh, good job. Great job. Had a were trying an uppercut there. And uh, it didn't quite work for him. Murphy again grinning, and oh, and uh, into the corner for a rest for those boys. What an exciting yeah. bout that was. Yeah, How did you score that one, Julian? I'd still give a 10-9 to, uh, to Murphy. Murphy, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he's just doing a little... You know, Overall, he was, he was doing more, wasn't he? How yeah. did you score that, Steve? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm sticking with Julian on those scores, so uh, I yeah. agree with you there, because uh, that's how it's panned out. Murphy's got in the uh, the harder, crisper punches. No, about that. He threw more of them in the round, I thought, overall, didn't you, yeah, Julian? He's, he's, he's doing a lot more work. You know, yeah. He's working to the body. He's working up to the yeah. head. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think that it's confusing the other guy a little bit. And, no, 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 about that. And, uh, in fact, if anything, he still would, to a certain degree, he's controlling the fight. Uh, I tell uh, you, I've got to, got to mention... Um, I feel uh, sorry for Adrian Stack. He, he was supposed to be fighting the title tonight. And, uh, he got cut in the gym, and he just uh, he's in the sideline there watching. I bet you he'd love to be in here. Oh, oh, sorry, he is he Adrian? Is he? Yeah, he'd love Adrian, to be here. Adrian always has a huge female following, Julian. There's some very oh, nice oh. girls from his gym. They come here on mass to support. And, uh, after his last yeah. one, I wanted to go over with him. No, I agree. <laughs> the Stack attack was something to witness. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we go. Murphy again running into the uh, the midsection of uh, of Matawatu. Looks like the belly to me, Stephen. Well, that's the midsection, Robert. Working overtime on that belly. <laughs> yes. He's setting that right in. Oh, he is. And Murphy now coming in with the right hand. The misses. Set him up. Murphy, your beautiful left jab. Double oh, left jab yeah. there from the big man. Oh, oh that was three straight rights. And again there, Murphy, oh, the uppercut. Can uh, Matt Awardu take this punishment? Well, he's... He's staying in there. He's staying well and truly in there. He's demonstrated to date that he can. Takes a, yeah. Take a fair bit to drop yeah. the big man down. I think it's like oh. chop, chopping up an well, oak tree. Was, there again, it was that little short right to the body. Big boy. Nice. That's right. Oh, the big boy's You're right, Julian. Those shorts, the jabs, and proper use or effective use of the jab can be oh. so critical oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. in setting the agenda, can't it? Oh, oh. About that got in a beautiful right hand then, uh, Matt Awardu, uh, mind you. Oh, I don't know about you, there's nothing oh. like copping a jab on the button. My God, you know oh. it, don't you? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> oh, I remember copying the old one or two in my day, Stephen. <laughs> from it, and out to here, I think. I cop more of them than I dished out. Oh, Murphy, very impressive this evening. Yes, I've been uh, quite surprised by him at this point in time. I think you have. And that he's done a great job because uh, a big reps on Matt Award with his career so far. Well, Murphy, a pair of them have put on still, a crowd pleaser. He's still punching away, Peter Murphy. Oh, yes. Yeah, about that. He's, um, oh, he's a cagey customer, the yeah. big guest. Yeah. Oh, a combination of the head. Oh. oh. And Out underneath, working away at the midsection, then and he comes the upstairs. Getting combinations, two and three blows in, yes. Doing a great job with it. Norton 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 keeps working on the short ribs there. Beautiful work on the short ribs, and Bolden now pushes Murphy in the back. I think Murphy was having a breather. Yeah, yeah. he was, yeah, leaning all over the big Samoan, managing to compose himself somewhat. And they're trying to work oh, away man, underneath. And no, a nice body shot from, uh, oh. two body shots from the big Samoan again there, did a great job. All we need is a kitchen sink, because that's what's been thrown. That is... Uh, well, yeah. oh, oh, nice big jab body jab. shot again there from um, um, uh, Matawadu into Murphy's uh, midsection. He tries to respond with uh, some punches and uh, whipping round into the uh, belly. No doubt he's picture perfect, Mr Murphy, isn't he? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. It's, uh, yes, well illustrated. And uh, again uh, there, Murphy... Uh, uh, KG was there, a step back before he came in, and there goes the bell to him around three. That was a bit more even, I reckon, Jimmy. Oh, I, I still give it to Murphy because he pressed the action. Yeah, oh, Chris Reed, really really he dictated the turns, didn't he? And he also, once again, he got more punches in, more connecting punches consistently throughout the round. Yes. What did you think, Stephen? Oh, I've given a 10-9 to Murphy, yes. Yeah, so I, 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 I go with, with the uh, majority yeah. decision there. I agree with you. But the big boys... If they're still in the fight, well, then anything can happen. Oh, yes. you're right. You only need to get the one connector, don't you? Yours, uh, no doubt these boys are getting tired, and you probably will find if this next round of the one after, that if someone lands a big head shot, that might be enough to just about do it, you know? Well, you remember, uh, Stephen, back in the days of the 1970 Victorian heavyweight champion, Foster Bibron, that's what he was notorious for. He might only swing three or four decent blows about the fight. God, when they there connected, you, go. you never got back up. No, oh, yes, oh. Well, he was... Um, uh, very uh, uh, well, the highly skilled with that uh, the big punching power, Foster Bibron. In the days when boxers might also play football, as he did at Fitzroy, Foster. Uh, yes, and uh, yeah, no doubt about that. Yes, a bit of football as well. People don't realise boxing's a versatile sport. Well, no, quite versatile, no doubt. Here we go. Oh, the Martoto's coming back. To the, he is, isn't hard. he? Yeah. yeah, I think he's corner must have told him just to start firing up. Yep, they've definitely given him a few oh, tips that he's taken on board. Oh, he's looking quite impressive. He seems to be a little fitter, too. A bit more energy coming out now. Yes, oh, and uh, he's punching hard, too, uh, Matawadu. He is, Stephen. He's stumping those punches in now. That's going to be a worry for Murphy if Matawadu can keep doing that the whole round. Now, Murphy again shakes up uh, Matawadu by going upstairs. Matawadu doesn't like that. No, he doesn't at all. That uh, throws him right off balance, and uh, he can't attack. He's covering up then, and because uh, he does... He doesn't always keep his hands up, Matt Award. He seems to drop them a bit too, doesn't he? Very low there. I think Murphy's... Oh! oh, oh, oh I was telling you about! Oh! I tipped that! You yeah, yeah, did Julian. Malcolm Bullner yeah, applying yeah, the count. Yeah. He looks all right. He just yeah. looks tired, man. Yeah, just yeah. tiredness and a bit of... Just of a fraction yeah. there, but... We'll see, we'll see how... Uh, oh, boy. He oh, might... Uh, oh. It might get ugly here. He's definitely a bit more puffed out. I think he's struggling for breath. Oh, no. A bit of saliva coming out there, too. Bit of expectorating, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but it's been uh, a great fight for oh, him. Hasn't it been a crowd oh, spectacle? Yeah. Oh, there yeah, we go. Murphy's come Murphy, back. Murphy, back. Oh, yes. He's come back big time here. Into his own corner there, working away at Matawadu. Drops him into the ropes. Matawadu waiting for the opportunity to see if he can drop Murphy again, I'd say. Oh, of course. Definitely think Murphy's breathing more heavily. There's not quite as much gas in the tank, Stephen. Yeah, I think he... he don't forget, his first round was enormous oh. for him. Oh, it was. He, he put everything into that. And Matt Awardu, uh, don't forget, he's probably had a few longer bouts. So yeah. He's been in the game yeah. a bit longer, too. He's a cagey yeah. customer. And I know he's been sparring um, Justin Whitehead. Has he? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. That'll give him a lot of uh, fitness anyway, because Whitehead's a very good fighter. No, yeah. I know that about that. And that mm. sort of overcomes him. Yeah, Matawadu, he's, uh, yeah. really, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's a 
Dave Dye seems to have yeah, just closed up on him there. Yeah. And uh, he's like a wounded uh, baby elephant there at the moment. No, uh, yeah, that right hand hurt him. Yeah, that really stung him. Boy, oh boy, you could tell he just almost frozen in time, wasn't he? I'll tell you what, they're digging deep, the boys. Oh, aren't they? They're putting everything into it, Julian. Yeah, but Murphy hasn't been able to... Uh, oh, another oh, right one up there. Has, Murphy's got him there. Uh, oh, he's... Uh, the, oh, yes. the head's been jolted back. He's working away on him. Bull yeah. might do something about this. If uh, Hammer doesn't get off the ropes, uh, Matt Wardle, he's got to get off the rope. Very little resistance being offered. Oh, oh. Just a, a little bit of a half leg up. A oh, couple of oh, safety. Oh, that was a big right hand. Oh, that was a big right hand. It was a bigger round for Tommy Hammer, but that right hand, I don't know. That was yeah. uh, Changed. It stopped him yeah. dead, didn't it, yeah. Julian? It yeah. did, but he still got Murphy down. I mean, um, what do you do with something well, like that? I mean, a nine, have, you nine all. You got to give it a ten no, nine, you, don't you? No, you have to give it to, uh, to Tommy. You got to give it to Tommy. Yeah. Stood yeah. his yeah. ground. Yeah. I mean, he was yeah. able yeah. to break the punishment. Yeah. No doubt about that. You've yeah. got to give it to him. The gloves didn't uh, touch the ground, so. Yep, yep. yep. So there you go. How's the uh, condition of? Uh, Automatato's eye there, uh, Julian. He's been out Matu, with you. Matu Auto, Robert. I had some trouble wrapping my tongue around it. Yeah. Matu Auto. I didn't pass uh, the moment. It looks all right. It looks all right. <laughs> yeah, I thought his eye yeah. looked a bit it, it momentarily looked, closed. It looked like it twinged a little bit. And, uh, yeah. you know, sometimes it happens when you get hit hard, you sort of, uh, your body parts start to twinge and you don't know what to do about it. That's right. You can't control oh. him, yeah. <laughs> well, it's tough going. Oh, it does look all right now, yeah. He, he had a bit of bleeding from the nostril, but that's been attended. Oh, look, I think that was his corner, man. Oh, oh Murphy! Oh, oh, he's touched him. He said he was in the big right. Malcolm Bullner applying the count. Is he going to go on, the big man? Yeah, he's, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Oh, he's gone. Big win. Well done. Big win. Outstanding win by Murphy. Was thrown in oh, out. yes. What an amazing result. Two marks to Murphy. That was a good and a great ending ending performance. Uh, he certainly deserves, to him. Yeah. deserves all the accolades in the world. Yeah, that was a great yeah. effort. Most impressive effort. Big yeah. win. Big win. Big win to Peter well Murphy. Well and a total crowd pleaser. And Keith Marks absolutely wrapped. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 yeah. yeah. Hugging his man, kissing his man. Actually, Keith looks better than Peter Murphy. He does, doesn't he? <laughs> They're not going gay on us, are they? <laughs> oh, boy. No, outstanding. And, and the crowd really got value for money there. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's very happy with Murphy, oh, too. Yeah. Murphy posing now yeah. for the cameras. Oh. Look at him. And why not? Why not? <laughs> Good on him. Yeah. Why not? Oh, here we go. He's and the back up. as well, the That's illustrated the area. Yeah. He's earned it. He's earned it. He's earned it. He has. That's it. He's done a great oh. job. I mean, he's now got the scalp of Matter Water on his log. Yeah. Yeah. That's an impressive yeah. scalp to claim. Oh. An absolutely yeah. impressive scalp to claim. Very impressive scalp. <laughs> Stan Longanese is wrapped for uh, Murphy yeah. over there, uh, too, gentlemen. Oh, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, great Malcolm victory Bullen here, about to uh, raise the hand. Bullen. Bullen. We'll leave it to Howard. That was value for money for the crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, 18 seconds in the round time. Your winner and the new victim, Chelsea's heavyweight champion, Peter Scott Murphy. Stephen Murphy has a huge following here. He's yeah, in the audience. Big class. Cheering and clapping. They're giving him a standing ovation. To and and oh, I yes. think if, if they didn't come here to watch him, I think everyone's turned the lobby. Oh, yeah. look. After uh, that uh, show, uh, after uh, that uh, show uh, what else? A cult, cult, cult figure, but you yeah. Cult figure, I'd love to see him again. Too so, right. Howard Lee's going to interview him now, I'd say, gentlemen. Let's cross to Howard. Peter Murphy has been in professional boxing for 13 years. Here he is, back. <laughs> Come up here, Peter. Peter Murphy, at 38 years of age, has defied the passing of time. His last fight was 8 1989. Here he came back at 38. Peter, 
What was the punch that led to the big win? You were down in round four, seemed down and out. What did Keith Mark say to you at the bell at round four? Look, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> I just give it everything, you know. I just want to thank Keith, Eric, all you guys. You trained me for this one week and we've done it. You can believe it. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable, Peter. Who do you have to thank? Everyone here. Everyone who I trained. Everyone who believed in me. Thanks for coming, every one of you. What brought you back to boxing after so many years in the wilderness? Spur of the moment thing. Spur of the moment? I don't know why. It's just decided. Okay, how about Jimmy Thunder or uh, maybe Mike Tyson? They're good fighters, aren't they? <laughs> okay. Well done, Pete Murphy. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, the Spud Man, he's back. Peter Spud Murphy. Okay, Peter, you've got a very important presentation to make. Your great involvement with the family and uh, in memory of your great dad, Robert Sergi. Mark, you've got a very tough task to name the best preliminary fighter on tonight's program. Who have you analysed and who have you given it to? Shannon McMahon. Shannon McMahon is our Robert Sergi Memorial Boxer tonight. Shannon McMahon. Mark, what impressed you about Shannon McMahon? Uh, I don't know, his technique and yeah, and everyone else just helped me choose him, so yeah. Okay, and your family over there, in memory of your dad? Pardon? Your family over there? Yeah, uh, Mum, Ash, Danielle, Ash, Danielle, Claude, Simone, Sab, and two grandparents, yeah. Well done, Mark. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Shannon McMahon. Leanne, I want Leanne. Brian Fogarty. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Καλώ ήρθατε απόψε και σα εύχομαι καλή διασκέδαση. Ladies and gentlemen, could I have absolute quiet, please? Shh. Absolute quiet, please. Order of the House. Ladies and gentlemen, before Leanne Maniata entertains us, let's pay respect today, the anniversary almost of the Bali bombings in Kuta. May God bless all those who lost their lives, those who were seriously injured, and those who were missing. We also pay, may say God bless to Stuart Duncan, one of our genial 
and outstanding promoters in Australasia. Seriously injured last week. May God be with you, Stuart, as you recover in the Monash Medical Centre. Could I have absolute quiet as the lovely Leanne Maniatis sings the Australian Our National Anthem. Australians, oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and free, with golden soil and wealth for toil, our home is curved by sea, our land about in nature's gifts, a beauty rich and rare, in history's page, let every stage advance us trail your fair in joyful strains and let us sing. Thank you, Leanne. Your judge is appointed by the Professional Boxing and Martial Arts Board, Chairman Bernard Balmer. Under the 10-point MUS system, assigned to this bout, Anika Williams, Gus Mercurio, and Andrew Campbell. Your ringside physician, Dr. Peter Lewis. Your timekeeper at the bell, Damien Membray. Your referee in charge of the action, Malcolm Mulder. Ladies and gentlemen, it's main event of the evening. It's showtime. Let's get it on. Introducing first on my left, occupying the blue corner from Spring Hill in Brisbane, Queensland. In amateur boxing, 25 fights, 20 wins. In 1997, he was Golden Gloves champion of Queensland. In professional boxing, four bouts, three wins, one loss. Wearing white trunks with red trim. Ladies and gentlemen, scanning 66 0.25 kilograms in the cord with Credence Clearwater. Would you welcome Brian B. Fogarty? Brian B. Fogarty with Shane Knox in the corner. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing on my right, occupying the red corner, he's a Malvern City Hall all time favourite, ranked by the World Boxing Organisation in the top 20, ranked by the World of Boxing Magazine. Number six, junior welterweight in Australia. He is the current WBA Asia Pacific junior welterweight champion. Scanning right on the button, 66 kilograms from Box Hill, North Victoria. A proud friend of Eddie Maguire, Harold Sun, wearing blue trunks with a touch of white. He's Australia's busiest fighter this year. Five big wins. Yud, Waru, De Niro, Panyan, and Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, a record of 15 fights, 13 wins, one draw, one loss. Seven big wins coming by way of knockout. He is the Nostradamus of ring nobility, the terror, Nick Tatoro. <laughs> Not a bulldog. Welcome to Center Ring, gentlemen. Let's have a good, clean fight. Good luck to both your fighters. May the best man win. Shake hands now. Go back to your corner. Shake, Nick, shake hands now, please. Go back to your corner. Welcome to a ringside, uh, Peter Manning Artist, the promoter here tonight. A magnificent promotion, a full house, a capacity house at Malvern Town Hall. Who else could do it here but Peter Manning Artist Promotions in the no. eastern suburb of Melbourne? Peter, good evening to you. Fogarty is a uh, Queensland amateur champion. He's had over 40 bouts and he's had uh, four wins as a prize for only one loss. Yes, yeah, so and Nick Cash starts off already with that beautiful straight left uh, there into the, uh, solar, pl the uh, solar plexus sternum region of the Fogarty's body and uh, already uh, testing him out there, uh, Peter. Yes, I, I picked up Brian at the airport yesterday and he's a really nice fellow. He's just a down to, down -to earth kid. He's been down on his luck and boxing's going to be the ticket to get, you know, get him a better life, I think. And good, he, yeah, got a pretty good log too. Uh, uh, four, three wins out of four at pro level and a 20 out of 25 at amateur level. Yeah, he's had about 40-odd amateur fights, good background, but he's just a nice kid. 
he's uh, had a lot of bad luck in his life and he, his brother actually committed suicide but oh gee that's so terrible he's, had a, he's a hard luck story type of kid but oh. getting back to nick totoris gee he's he's fit he's keen and he, he's probably the best i'd say welterweight super lightweight in australia at the moment and he's looking to be in fantastic physical condition he's had a lot of big offers to appear on a costa zoo undercard to fight uh, muhammad ebradeen so he Oh, and he's wailing in with those heavy body shots. They yeah. take their oh. time. Ooh. Oh, yes, that, that uh, rib roaster there wouldn't have uh, helped Fogarty somewhat at all. Uh, and uh, uh, Totoris now blocking uh, has uh, uh, Fogarty in the neutral corner there. Uh, that's uh, managed to get out there, but Totoris, there's just a bit of feeling out there at the moment, but now Fogarty trying to fight back with an uppercut right. and around the top right hand. Robert? Totoris had his defence there well in check. He, he defended those blows quite well, Stephen. Yes, he certainly did, and uh, Fogarty again there working away, coming in underneath of the Totoris gloves, but uh, uh, not having much effect on the Nick. Just seems to be rock hard in the body. You know, oh. He's just so fit. An outstanding physical specimen, but look at the concentration and the position of his gloves. He's got every angle covered. No, oh, has he ever? He's a magnificent boxer in his fourth year, his medical course, and a big story in the uh, Eddie Maguire column of the Sunday Herald, uh, Saturday Herald Sun last Saturday, and he goes in again in the blue corner there, and here comes Keith Ellis oh, Sr. Wow. there, helping out the Fogarty camp and there with the stool. And um, the best cut man in the business, Keith Ellis Sr. No, it's a correct. It doesn't go unsaid. Uh, he's magnificent. So... Yeah. Um, how did you score that, Stephen? I thought uh, Nick, uh, you know, uh, did uh, more work in that round. Uh, he uh, pushed the fight. He also, his punches landed uh, heavily. Uh, Fogarty was moving away most of the time, but uh, Nick uh, did start the fight off very well. You couldn't really argue with that, I don't think, Robert. No, I agree with you. I think he definitely got the more scoring punches, Stephen. What's going to happen with the zoo undercard with the Nick, uh, Peter? Is there anything going to happen with uh, Nick for that, or is it... Uh He's been off with Mohamed Abrujin. He's the 2000 Olympic gold medalist, supposedly just as good as Costa Zoo. He's ten and orders of pro. Mm. We've got to digest that. I mean, Nick's well rated now as well, so... Um, it, it's just an option we, we, we have a look at. Yeah. Yeah, definitely having a look at. Yeah, that'd be a fantastic. Oh, I believe that'll be the biggest crowd in a boxing fight since the Fennec uh, Nelson thing at Princess Park from uh, nine or ten years ago. I'm sure of that, Steve. And uh, here he goes again, Nick, with that big straight lift. That's a powerful jab, that. It's not like uh, some fighters just tap the jab out. Nick drives it through the shoulder. He was like a rocket. Yes, and that's a very heavy punch. He puts the whole body behind it there, as you see again there doing that. Now, if he hits you flush on with that, you're nearly history. Oh, yeah. Oh, Fogarty fighting back there to get out of that corner, and uh, Nick uh, responds well. Fogarty looking pretty nifty there from uh, Queensland, the boy. He moved very well in that sequence, didn't he, Stu? He certainly did. He got out of the trouble very well, actually, away from uh, Nick. Uh, stands him in good stead, uh, young Fogarty there. He's got the white trunks, of course, with the red piping and... Uh, the, uh, the belt seems to be jutting out to the right for him there. So that exotic glow mesh piping. Uh, yes, uh, very much so, uh, Robert. Uh, another fashion statement for the evening. And um, uh, to Taurus coming in hard. There's been a bit of some uh, colourful uh, equipment uh, used tonight inside the ring. This is actually a fight where a pure boxing fan would absolutely appreciate it because <coughs> Fogarty's just a nice mover and Nick has to really Jackson. work him out and he's working mm. him out now and he's starting to find his range so it's going to turn out to be a really nice fight yeah got to chase him a bit too fogarty he's very smart he's quick as an eel uh, oh again nick driving the, the left straight through and uh, that time fogarty got a little uh, sort of got an uppercut nice in uppercut that got in yeah, yeah. It was a nice punch uh, that fogarty got into uh, nick there with the uppercut and nick throws out that straight right it's a nice uh, uh, punch for him as oh, well although very effective, straight yeah. left's a ripper though i love that yeah. driving left that's the one that does the damage for the uh, for the Totoris uh, camp. You're certainly right, Peter. The pair of them are pure boxing scientists, aren't they? Definitely. Look, they're only fighting two-minute rounds, and it doesn't suit Nick. Nick's yeah. a three-minute fighter. Oh, yes. he is, isn't I he? I mean, Nick comes on at the end of the round, so each time Nick's getting warmed up, the round's over. Yeah, yeah. so it doesn't suit him, does it? And, oh, well, there, yeah, and uh, the bell goes. That's the end of round one, and uh, round two, sorry, and uh, Fogarty... Uh, did a little bit better that round, I thought. How did you score it, Stephen? I think Nick still did enough to get the round because he's uh, pressurised to Fogarty enough. And that driving straight left, that's the difference between these two boys at the moment because Fogarty hasn't shown so far what he can do with his artillery. Nick's the one using the heavy stuff already. And that's the driving straight left into the head or the body region. Puts the whole shoulder behind it uh, and starts it from the heels. That's where the power comes from. And he's 
always got his punches under control in that style. Young Fogarty at the moment um, is uh, playing more of an evasive game, waiting for an opportunity to counter punch, and he hasn't had much of an opportunity to so counter punch due to Nick's uh, quickness to get away. So at the moment, uh, it's a Tatora situation. Stephen, I thought that uh, Tatoris' defence was far more impressive in that round in that it, whilst he landed more scoring punches, he resisted potentially scoring potential scoring punches against him by an effective defence. If you look at his glove work, his movement of the body, the way he angles the body, mm. as, as Peter said, it's pure boxing science. It is, see, yeah, no doubt about that. It's all about angles, and Nick's just giving him some nice southpaw angles, which Hasn't makes he? it... Yeah. Oh, it, it's poultry in motion. Another straight left. It hand. really is, yeah. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. Uh, and there he goes, that left hand. That's a huge power pack punch for Tatoris. Um, young Fogarty got away there. Whoa! Did the mouth guard come out? Or something came out. I don't know what it was. A bit of plastic maybe flew out. Whoa! The left again. If he had a hit him with that, that would have put him up the roof. And uh, back of the head to Malcolm Bulmer says to so watch that, uh, the youngster from Queensland. Uh, Tatoris driving into the midsection with the left again. You know what he's going to do. Fogarty doesn't seem to be able to combat that uh, style of Tatoris at this point. No, he doesn't. That's his biggest concern, young Fogarty. Is, uh, you see the difference in body weight, there's hardly any difference, but the Tatoris appears to be a five kilo stronger boy. Nick's probably physically as strong as any welterweight out there. Oh, oh no doubt about that. He's, he's an absolute picture That's, of fitness. Uh, he, uh, 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 with sheer strength can uh, dominate fights and he's starting to do that somewhat now oh, oh, that right hand right, right. that's caused damage that was a uh, right cross right. coming round to the side right. of the jaw um this didn't send the electricity though to the brain though of Fogarty oh, I'd certainly let him know he oh, oh, was he left hand stuck him out that's, that's it. it and the Tatora army is on fire here oh boy He's in trouble. Young Fogarty's in trouble. And it's driving left Lewis hand. Attending to him. Uh, that looks pretty bad, that, from that young lad. He's in a bit of trouble there. And there goes to Taurus. The left hand did a lot of damage, a ton of damage here. Yeah, very direct hit, wasn't it, Stephen? The uh, positions are uh, attending to him at the moment. Yeah. And that Peter Maniatis uh, jumped out of the chair here at ringside. Tatoris now a medical man himself. He's a medical student coming over to have a look. That's right. At uh, young Fogarty and you can always concerned. see. And uh, we've got another doctor there too, Simon Hillman, who's on the board's also a medical practitioner. Yes. And young Fogarty's now got up, which is good. The crowd clapping at ringside there to signify their appreciation of the boy's efforts and the fact that he's been able to raise his body and they're now just uh, massaging the legs a bit and uh, giving the boy some comfort uh, to get him back on his feet. But that's an enormous KO. That was, oh, yeah. was on the cards. I kept saying during that fight, Robert, you would have heard me time and time again, that the Tatoris left hand, driven from the starts from the heels, comes through the shoulders, straight through that straight left. And so superbly balanced is he with it that it's like being hit with a left-handed sledgehammer, Robert. Yes, that's right. He uh, was definitely... Uh very much stunned by that blow, Stephen. It was a terribly effective um, punch. There was just no doubt about that. Uh, it uh, was exquisite and uh, so full of power. You've got to look at the power of the man. At 66 kilos, he actually came into that fight 0.25 of a kilo in lighter body weight That's than right. young Fogarty. Fogarty was marginally uh, heavier, heavier than him, yeah. But Taurus looks five kilos stronger. I mean, this is what you get when you put the hours and the time into the gymnasium room and... Um, the promoter kissing his man over there to Taurus. Yes, well, what an excellent performance from Taurus. He is the consummate boxer. There's just no other way you can describe it, is he? Yeah, magnificent. Young Fogarty is talking now. He's lucid. Yeah, he looks and, all right. Uh, Dr. Lewis is with him. Just a bit stunned. Yeah, a bit stunned, and uh, Dr. Lewis is going to sit him down. And, uh, he's standing up pretty well now. He's standing up well. He needs to uh, probably best if he does sit down and have a rest. Oh, he's talking. He seems pretty much in command of things. Very much so, uh, and uh, seems to be uh, little, he's still a little bit uh, not... Uh, a uh, problem, but a little bit wobbly still, I believe. Yeah, he's not completely compass mentis, is he, Stu? No, uh, no, he's still a bit shaken by that punch. He'll, he'll be a little bit of a sick lad tonight, to a certain degree, because that was enormous power that oh, he got uh, hit with there, and also got crushed into the so neutral corner, uh, which he wasn't able to fall back uh, into open space, Robert. He had to fall back into, a, into an area that was blocked up, and uh, he got the, probably got a double whammy. Where they are, Malcolm Bulmer raises the hand of uh, Nick Tatoris. 
Very happy in his camp there. Oh, superb effort. Yeah, six wins out of six fights here this year, Nick Tatoris. And Howard Lee is about to interview Tatoris. And uh, we, uh, we may uh, go to Howard in a minute. We'll go to Howard when he takes over he's, uh, the interview. He's uh, very happy, Nick Tatoris. Six big wins, calling for some of his people to get into the ring with him. Yeah. And uh, young Fogarty at the moment having a decent chat to his corner man and uh, trainer. Yeah, he's all right. Just to uh, see where it's all at. Stephen, the essential difference... Oh, here, well, here we go. Oh, Howard Lee. Well the beautiful punch. Take us through it. Yeah, well, uh, step by step. Um, <laughs> third round, was it, Howard? Yep. Third round. Yeah, just getting into the fight. Um, the kid came out, you know, surprised me a few times. Good sharp boxer, clever kid. But um, fortunately not, not today, mate. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. Here's Nick Tatoris. So I'd just like to uh, thanks for all your support, especially all the boys down all the clubs. Um, down, you know who you are pretty much, <laughs> a lot of people. I'd like to thank my promoter, manager, big help, Peter Maniatis, and my sparring partners, Nick, Jonu, Chris, his brother, I'd like to thank my team, Jimmy, and all the rest of the boys. All of you, thank you very much. Thank you. How about three cheers for Nick Patera, the perfect six. Hip up. Hip up. Hip up. Okay. Brian, come across. Come on, give our Queensland man a big round of applause. Brian B. Fogarty. Brian, you're going along nicely. Then he caught you with a bomb. Bad luck there. Yeah, just the way it goes, I guess. Um, I thought I was going along fine. But um, I was feeling fit, wasn't tired at all. And then um, I guess got caught with a good one, but I'll get him next time. Next time, he says, the Creedence Clearwater man, Brian B. Fogarty. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Peter Maniatis, Peter, congratulations on another great year of professional promoting. Thanks, everyone, for supporting the whole boxing community. It's been a great year. Please drive home safely. I've got another show in March. Be merry. A lot of breaks coming up now, so everyone look after yourself. I'd like to thank Jane Sergi and the Sergi family for supporting the event. The events are going to grow bigger and stronger every year. I'd like to thank OMX Australia with Dr. Fernando as well. It's just been a fantastic concept, and I hope everyone enjoyed the night. Thank you. Now let's do a roundup, Stephen, of the uh, bouts. Perhaps if you call through the card and we'll have an overview of tonight's events. Yeah, we'll whip through this, uh, of course. The, um, hang on one moment. Well said, Howard Luke. Thank you, Howard. Now we'll, now we'll go to our round up. We'll go to our first fight there. Lee McFadden started slowly, but uh, came home like a train. Nearly left his run too late, but he did, he uh, did. win the last two rounds. Yeah, and uh, uh, but at the end of it, all a draw because uh, McFadden, I think, were probably. Uh, uh, it wasn't the aggressor, Robert, but uh, he was the fighter who uh, had that big rangey straight right. But uh, uh, a big draw, how did you see that? Oh, I think it was obviously a draw. McFadden uh, did a little too, uh, too little too late. But uh, nonetheless, it was a good uh, commencement to the night's proceedings and a sign of the better things to come. So in the second bout of the night, Shannon McMahon, uh, the young kid off the block, ended up winning the preliminary fighter award of the night for a fantastic victory over Ben Smullen. He was great a job. Most impressive young fellow, and uh, I understand that was his uh, debut in professional ranks. I think he is a most exciting prospect with a very big future ahead of him. He was a, a classic scientific boxer, I thought, Stephen, with an array of combinations, protective measures, kept his gloves up at all times to guard himself, and a most impressive young athlete, and I'm certain we'll see him featuring very prominently in dispatches in the future. Exciting prospect. Managed to cut Ben Smullen too, gave him an eye cut, which yeah. didn't help Smullen. And uh, uh, Smullen, an experienced boxer and kickboxer, unfortunately, 
uh, wasn't able to cope with the new kid off the block. Now, no. uh, Bobby Patterson uh, fought Nick Lantouris at cruiserweight level here tonight. We saw That's Patterson right. drop down from the heavyweight ranks. Uh, did a lot of uh, sort of uh, Fred Astaire-style movements and uh, uh, whatever threw out the bat, Patterson, but wasn't able to exert any authority at all on uh, Nick Lantouris. It was just steady, steady as she goes all the way through the fight. Did a great job, Robert Lantouris. Just well, too good. Lantouris was. Patterson just wasn't able to dictate the terms. And the key to it was that Lantouris was able to constantly dictate the terms. I thought his judicious use of the art of foxing was very good to uh, lure Lantura, uh, try and lure Patterson in. Lantouris lured Patterson in with some astute foxing. And Patterson just didn't do enough. He didn't go in there and really get on with the business, Stephen. And that, that was the difference between the two lads on that night. I on think, that bout, I should yeah, say. I think you're right. One thing about Patterson is I think he thinks of himself too much as a veteran now and um, as if he's um, cruising along in the division. He needs to, uh, in his fights, exert more authority and use more boxing power. He's got punching power. Yeah, he's no got to learn to that. use it, and he just didn't use it tonight. He and wasn't he'll... striking, and he wasn't giving enough striking blows. That was his problem, Stephen. You know, he didn't get out there and, and box, which is, you know, you've got to throw punches, and there was too much of this wobbling around and Fred Astaire and Finessing. Yeah, Finessing. correct, yes. without getting down to the old-fashioned punching the man where it counts. Yeah, well, Daniel Lovett, who had a huge support base from Cranbourne in the gym, uh, gymnasium, the town hall here tonight, Malvern Town Hall, uh, against uh, young Tim Budd in his first fight. Well, enormous oh, first round. Well, wasn't Lovett so impressive? What an yeah. excite, again, an exciting prospect he is. At every a uh, level, Stephen, he got the atmosphere going in this auditorium, which was superb. Plus, boy, were those array of combinations he dispensed. Oh, yes. Frankly, uh, magnificent to watch. It, it's what the real art of boxing is all about. And he ended up blowing Bud away in the first round with a big KO in his oh. first professional bout, mind you. He did. He dropped him right out of contention, didn't he? He, he was oh. most impressive. Certainly was. And then we had the big heavyweight stouts between... Huey Mono Matu Auto, the big Samoan who used to use uh, the name of Tommy Hammer. That's at, right, the uh, Hammer. The Hammer at the 110 kilos, so just over that, fighting Peter Murphy, coming back from an 11-year layoff from professional boxing rinks. It was and an exciting, uh, a surprise package, that one, wasn't it, uh, Stephen? It certainly was. Well, after um, a constant uh, battle of the, the baby elephants, it nearly was, wasn't it, there for a while, Murphy came home and did the big KO in round five. How and did he you was find it? Picture... Murphy was picture perfect in every way, Stephen. <laughs> we're just doing a little summary and then we're going to give it away. Then we're going to okay, we'll finish off and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a ring on Monday. Yeah, we'll do. Nice and nice 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 best. Uh, sorry about the interruption, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Lewis leaving the uh, arena with uh, a young friend and. Um, he uh, was picture perfect, was uh, <laughs> Peter Murphy in every respect. Uh, it certainly was. Peter Murphy, well, no, now that's a phenomenal effort and uh, finally ended up getting a KO victory that he well deserved at the finish. And Can't take anything away from no, Matt Ordo. No, not at all. It, it was an exciting bout across the board. The number of punches that were thrown there, and uh, boy, did those lads go for it. And Murphy, when you think it, had almost a 13-year break from professional boxing, comes back at 38 years of age. That is a phenomenal effort, Stephen, oh. and... Uh, Boy, oh boy, did the crowd get behind these two chaps too. The atmosphere was just electric. Second. Oh, it was electric. It was second to none. Oh, you could cut the air with a knife. Oh, oh I think there were quite a few nervous patrons here tonight, Stephen. Oh, they were. Now, we're in our final bout, yep. of course. Now, Nick Torres, he's won five out of five. He was going for his sixth straight victory up against Brian Fogarty, a young fellow from Queensland who'd had 25 amateur bouts for 20 wins, four professional bouts, three wins, one loss. A... Just a, 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 it turned out to be an obliteration of Fogarty by Nick Tatoris. Well, what a fantastic left hook that was that dropped to Fogarty. It was just a, a copybook, uh, textbook punch for which this young lad was never going to get up again. And uh, that's what boxing's all about, Stephen, is having that knockout blow at the time that it counts. And uh, Tatoris demonstrated why he is such a highly uh, a favoured contender. No doubt about that. Apparently, as we heard Peter Benyata say, during the promotion to Taurus, uh, has been offered an undercard fight on the Costa Zoo promotion yes. uh, against a fellow who has 10 or 11 wins, no losses. So that'll be interesting to see if that comes off. Uh, one thing you'd say about Young uh, in that punch that uh, Fogarty did, uh, he got crushed into the corner there, the big left he hand, did. which uh, yes. uh, Tatoris 
started to, from the heels, nicely balanced. The heels, he got the, the power from the heels through the shoulder and delivered a left hand, probably more a bit like a straight left and a left hook, but I need to see the video. Uh, but whatever but it, it was... was a, an excellent angle of attack. Oh, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. No, he had no the angle. It was the angle yeah. that he had correct. He uh, struck... Well, he drove into the jaw of Fogarty. Fogarty was never going to get back up from no, that punch. No, no, no. You knew the, minute, the, the second that connected, that was all over Rover. He boxed him in. Once you get boxed in that neutral corner, you got to Taurus slowing you up, you're gone because gone he's done that so many times. So that wraps us up. A fantastic night's boxing. Peter Manning Artist Promotions, Promotion. Robert. It's been very happy to commentate with you here tonight. As always, Stephen. Good I'm to from, see uh, you. Some of our uh, friends from the uh, western area of town coming down to visit us. Well, this and, uh, is uh, from the Malvern Town Hall. This is Robert Cameron. And uh, Stephen J. Peake signing off till next time. And good evening. we will see you then and good evening from us. Thank you.